All right, people. I believe everybody is doing great, nice, and absolutely fine. So, welcome to this beautiful session and welcome to An Academy Neat English. If you have not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button as soon as possible. Okay. And before that, let me know in the live chat if I am audible and visible properly, if you can hear me and if you can see me properly. Everybody in the live chat, okay? Everybody out there. So what's going on? Tell me in the chats with the fire emojis, everybody, okay? So we have today this semiconductors, okay? We'll have to finish this semiconductors today. We'll be starting from the scratch and I'll be showing you each and every single question in this particular chapter, okay? Whatever the topics you have, we'll be covering all of those topics from the scratch, okay? And once you guys are done with your... Uh, once you guys are done with this particular session, afterwards you would be able to solve each and every single question. That's for sure, okay? And make sure, if you have not liked this particular session, I want you guys to like it as soon as possible, okay? Hit the like button as soon as possible, okay? So, 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 my dear people, okay, great, 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 great. Now, listen to me very carefully, my dear people, in this particular case. See, as if you guys are preparing for your NEET, okay, for the upcoming, if you are basically looking to crack in the, in the upcoming time. So, we say we have got a scholarship test for you people, okay. You can win up to scholarship, we say 90%, okay. You can get the laptops, okay. You can win the mobile phones or the other exciting rewards. The link is in the description below. You can join this particular scholarship test, okay? And you can give it and you can win so many excited prizes over here. One more thing I just want to tell you that we have recently launched this particular batch, okay? If you guys want to start from your prep, if you guys want to start your preparation from the scratch, okay? This batch is definitely for those people. We say end game 2.0. And this batch is live. We have already started this batch. And what are the classes you have missed? All of those are uh, available in the recording format. So you can watch those, okay? And you can basically enroll in this particular batch. And if you enroll, you can use my code in order to get the extra discount. That is Yavar over here, okay? Now, everybody, guys, tell me in the chats, how is the Josh? How is the Josh, okay? So this is the time to kill this entire chapter, the whole chapter. So we have to start this semiconductors, okay? Now let me start this particular chapter from the scratch, from the basics, okay? The ones who have not studied this chapter as of now. So from now onwards, they'll be master in this particular chapter also, okay? Now listen to me very, very, very carefully. It will take us more than... I would say approximately six hours, okay? We'll com be completing this in the six hours. Now, listen to me very carefully in this particular case. The first thing that we need to discuss over here is basically semiconductors, okay? What is a semiconductor? This is the first topic that we'll be dealing over here. Now, my dear people, everybody of you know that, everybody of you know that, when it comes to the materials, sir, we have heard about, we have heard about, we say conductors. We have heard about conductors, okay? When it comes to the different materials, we have heard about the conductors. And we have also studied about the insulators, okay? We have also studied about the insulators. Sir, what is a conductor? When it comes to a conductor, we say, sir, if I say I have got a conductor in front of me over here, we say current can flow easily through this conductor, okay? We say conduction is possible in this particular case. Conduction is possible. Conduction is possible. What does conduction mean? Means current can easily flow. There are so many free electrons present over here. Free 
electrons, free electrons, okay? Lot of free electrons are present in this conductor. Everybody knows it. And when it comes to the insulator, we say, sir, in case of an insulator, we say, sir, conduction, conduction is not possible. Conduction is not possible. If I say, I have got an insulator in my hand, sir, will the current flow through this insulator we say sir no current does not flow through the insulator over here okay so we say no free electrons no free electrons free electrons are present inside the insulator okay everybody knows it so we say when it comes to the conductor sir current can flow easily through the conductor when it comes to an insulator sir current does not flow through the insulator we have got so many free electrons inside the conductor because of those electrons only, we say, sir, current can flow over here. And when it comes to the insulator, we say there are no free electrons when it comes to the insulator. Now, this is what we have studied already. Now, sir, in between the conductors and insulators, we have got the third material. In between the conductors and insulators, we have got the third material. That's what we call the semiconductor semiconductor okay so we say we say we can clearly say in this particular case we can clearly say in this particular case this conductor lies between the semi this conduct sorry this semiconductor lies between the conductor and insulator so we say we say over here i can write the first point semiconductor semiconductor lies between the conductor, the conductor and insulator and insulator. Means sir, what does that mean? It means that it has dual nature. It has, it has dual nature, dual nature. Sir, what does that mean? Means it can behave, it can sometimes behave like a conductor and it can sometimes behave like an insulator. That's why we say it comes in between the conductors and insulators. If you want this semiconductor to become a conductor, you can do that. That's why this property makes the semiconductor special. If you want this semiconductor to become insulator, it can become insulator. This is the property of an insulator. This is the property of a semiconductor. That's why we say it has got dual nature. It has got dual nature. Okay. It can behave like a conductor. It can behave like an insulator. It can behave like a conductor. It can behave like an insulator. And I must say over here, one more point I just want to mention in this case. That is nothing but we say, we say it's conductivity. It's conductivity and resistivity. Resistivity can be controlled. Its conductivity and resistivity can be controlled. My dear people, listen to me very carefully. When it comes to a conductor, conductor has got large conductivity. That's why current can flow easily through a conductor. When it comes to an insulator, it does not have, it has a very small conductivity. So we say, if you increase the conductivity of a semiconductor, it will behave like a conductor. If you decrease the conductivity of a semiconductor, it will behave like an insulator. That's why we say its conductivity and resistivity can be controlled. You cannot convert an insulator into a conductor. Okay. That's why we say this property of semiconductors makes it special. It can behave like a conductor. It can behave like an insulator. Is that clear till over here? Let me know in the chats. Everybody out there with the fire emojis. Tell me. Is this clear till over here? Is this clear till over here? Is this clear till over here? Is this perfect? I'll be sharing all the PDFs as of now. I have shared the AC, EMI and modern physics. Rest of the PDFs I'll share. So as of now, focus on the uh, session only. Okay. Everybody in the live chat. I want everybody to tell me if everything is sorted. Now see, now see, listen to me very carefully, listen to me very carefully. 
when it comes to when it comes to let's suppose conductor when it comes to a semiconductor and when it comes to an insulator we say we say sir when it comes to their conductivity when it comes to their conductivity we say the conductivity of a semiconductor it lies from 10 raise power 2 to we say 10 raise power 6 ohm meter inverse 10 raise power 8 10 raise power 8 exactly so we say 10 raise power 8 ohm meter inverse okay this is the conductivity of a semiconductor means it has got a large conductivity current can flow easily the more if i say this this material has got a great conductivity means current can be produced very easily in this material now listen to me very carefully when it comes to the semiconductor we say in case of semiconductor its conductivity lies from 10 raise power minus 5 to 10 raise power 6 we say ohm meter inverse and when it comes to the insulator its conductivity is we say less than 10 raise power minus 9 10 raise power minus 9 we say ohm meter inverse my dear people we say let's take a look at the conductivity of the semiconductor its conductivity is from 10 raise power minus 5 to 10 raise power 6 so we say you can make the conductivity of the semiconductor 10 raise power minus 5 also you can increase its conductivity and make it 10 raise power 6 also if you make the conductivity of the semiconductor as 10 raise power 6 it will behave like a conductor if you decrease it it will behave like an insulator just a normal data that's what i wanted to tell you over here now listen to me very carefully one more important point one more important feature or a property of semiconductor i just want to tell you what is that that is we say we say only unidirectional only unidirectional current is allowed only unidirectional current is allowed in semiconductor sir what does that actually mean listen to me very carefully let's suppose let's suppose i'll take a wire over here or i'll take a resistance over here this is the resistance and i am connecting a battery to this particular resistance over here listen to me very carefully we say sir current will leave from the positive terminal of the battery and it, it will enter the resistor from this side from this side this will be the direction of the current over here current moves from positive terminal to the negative terminal this higher this is the higher higher one positive terminal so in case of this resistance or this wire over here wire also has the resistance the current is entering from this side now my dear people if i say if i say you have got the same resistor over here you have got the same resistor over here but you change the polarity of the battery now higher potential or the positive terminal you make from this side now in this case we say sir current will leave something like this and it can flow in this wire something like this so current can enter this resistor from this side and current can enter this resistor from this side also so in case of resistance wire conductor current can enter from both the sides current can enter from both the sides but but i mentioned the statement over here only unidirectional current is allowed over here both bidirectional current in this case is allowed but when i say in case of a semiconductor let me just make it over here sir let's suppose you have got the semiconductor over here sir we make the semiconductor this is the pn junction diode later on we have to study as of now keep in your mind that this is the semiconductor and if you connect a battery something like this over here we say the current will leave from the positive terminal and it can enter the diode from the back side from the back side this is this current is allowed this can easily flow into the semiconductor but my dear friends if i say i have got the diode over here this is the pn junction diode or this is the semiconductor this is the semiconductor this is the resistor conductor this is the semiconductor over here 
And in this case, if you connect the battery something like this, if you connect the battery something like this, we know, sir, current will leave from the positive terminal and it will enter the diode something like this. In this case, this diode, this semiconductor will not, will not allow this particular current. Diode will only allow the current from back side, but diode does not allow the current from front side. So that's why if in a particular circuit, you want only current should flow in only one direction, we say use the diode over there. Sir, the current will not flow, current cannot enter from the front side of the diode. This we'll study later on. But when it comes to the resistor, current can enter from this side, current can enter from this side. Over here, current can flow, but in this case, current cannot flow from the front side. Tell me in the chats, is this clear to each and everyone, guys? Is this clear to each and everyone, guys? Everybody out there will teach you the ray optics also, chill scenes, okay? <laughs> great, 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 great. <clears throat> okay, okay. So these were basically, these were basically some of the properties of semiconductor, okay? Semiconductor is a device which can behave like a conductor as well as we say insulator. That's why this is special. You cannot convert an insulator into a conductor. So that's why these were some only unidirectional current is allowed in the semiconductor. Okay. So these are some of the properties of semiconductor. Now listen to me very carefully. Now listen to me very carefully over here. Everybody out there in the chat, everybody out there, look at me. Now, we have got this. This is what we call the band diagram. Sir, what does this band diagram actually mean? Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. Give me 10 minutes and I'll make this clear to each and every one of you. Okay? But listen to me very properly. My dear people, when it comes to the band diagram, when it comes to the band diagram, Let's suppose we have got a material over here. Let's suppose we have got a material over here. Okay. Sir, what material is this? If I say, if I say, I have got this, this is, this is some material over here. This is the phone over here. This is made up of some material. Okay. I have got this material. Now, my dear friends, if we say this is a material, if we say this is a material, or you say this is a crystal. Okay. This material is made up of the crystal. Okay, if we, if we keep on zooming this material. So we say, if you talk about the crystal, okay. My dear people, tell me one thing. We say, sir, if you have this material over here, this material over here. I say, sir, this material, this material is made up of, we say, small atoms, okay. This material is made up of small atoms. How many atoms? We say millions of atoms. This material is made up of, we say, sir, made up of, we say, millions of atoms. Millions of atoms. Okay. I'm taking a general material over here. Okay. And that material is made up of, we say, millions of atoms. Okay. Small, small atoms are combined together and they form the material. Now, my dear friends, now, my dear friends, we say in these atoms, in these atoms, we say, sir, millions, millions of electrons are present. Millions of electrons are present. Okay. You have got a material over here. This material is made up of small, tiny, tiny particles. Those tiny particles are called atoms. And in those millions of atoms, we say millions of electrons are present. Okay. Because we know inside an atom, inside an atom, millions of electrons are present. Okay. Now, 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 listen to me very carefully. We say millions of electrons are present inside these millions of atoms. My dear friends, I want you guys to basically zoom this. Okay. Zoom in. So when you basically zoom this, okay, you reached at, let's suppose, atomic level. You have got this material over here. 
I want you guys to see. Imagine, imagine. I want you guys to see its crystal. I want you guys to see its atomic level. You keep on zooming this material and you see there are so many atoms present over here, okay? So we say, sir, this material is made up of so many atoms. I say, again, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. So once, once you keep on zooming, we say, sir, we got to know, listen to me very carefully. We got to know, we got to know these electrons, millions of electrons inside the crystal, they are present something like this. Listen to me very carefully. Do not use your brain. Whatever I say over here, keep that thing in your mind. Just follow that. You don't have to become the physicist. Okay. So whatever I say, just keep on following that. Each and every question we will solve. So we say over here, those atoms we saw, those atoms we saw were basically present inside this particular crystal, something like this, something like this, something like this, something like this. Okay. So we say, listen to me very carefully. So we have got a structure over here. We have got a material over here. Once we zoom this material, we reach the atomic level and we saw so many atoms are present over here. Once again, if we keep on zooming, we reach the, we say subatomic level over there, electrons were present. And those electrons were present in these lines, something like this. Those electrons were present in these lines, something like this. These are the electrons, these are the electrons, and these lines are what we call the energy levels. Energy levels. So electrons, Inside a crystal, we can say are present in the energy levels. Sir, but you have told us in Bohr's model, electrons present in an atom are present in the orbits. That, that energy, that, that model is valid for single electron system. My dear people, that, elect, that model is present, that model is valid for single electron system. If you have got an atom in which only one electron is present, then we use that model. But in the actual crystal, we say millions of electrons are present and millions of electrons are present in like, like how? We say in these lines and these lines are we call the energy levels. And this is what we call, this is what we call the energy band diagram. This is what we call energy band diagram. So I'll write a statement over here. What did I just tell you? See, I'm focusing more on this particular thing over here so that you will not get any sort of confusion. Listen to me very carefully. I'm saying I took a material over here. I keep on zooming that material. We say millions of atoms are present. And in those millions of atoms, millions of ele electrons are present. If you want to imagine how those electrons are present inside this material, we say those are present like in these lines. And these lines are called the energy levels. And as a whole, this is what we call the energy band diagram. So we say, we say in a crystal, we say in a crystal, in a crystal, we say electrons are present. Electrons are present. Electrons are present in the energy band in a crystal electrons are actually present in the energy band tell me in the chats guys is this clear is this clear is this clear is this clear everybody out there whatever i said over here keep that thing only in your mind okay all the people out there i'm i'm waiting for your answers in the chats is this clear till over here? In an atom, we say electrons are present in the energy levels. These lines are what we call the energy levels. And as a whole, this is what we call the energy band diagram. As a whole, this is what we call the energy band diagram. Now listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. See, this energy band diagram, if I ask you, sir, what is present in the energy band diagram? You say electrons, okay? Now, if you have got a conductor, that is one material. If you have got semiconductor, that is another material. If you have got an insulator, that is another material. We say energy band diagram for different materials looks different. That's what I'm going to teach you over here. 
So we say band diagram for semiconductors. If we take a material, let's suppose I say this is a material over here. This is a pure silicon over here. So we say my dear friends is a semiconductor. Can you tell us sir, how does the energy band diagram of this semiconductor look like? Yes, I will tell you. Listen to me very carefully. When it comes to the energy band diagram of semiconductor, it looks something like this. Listen to me very carefully. It looks something like this. This is how actually the energy band diagram of a semiconductor look like. This is how actually the band diagram of semiconductor look like. Listen to me very carefully. This one, this one, the upper part, this is what we call the conduction band. Conduction band. And this one, this one, these energy levels, this is the gap. This one, this one is what we call the valence band. Valence band. Okay. This is how does the band diagram of a semiconductor look like. And this gap between the two, this gap between the two, this is what we call the energy band gap. Energy band gap. Okay, this is what we call the energy band gap. Now listen to me very carefully, my dear friends. These are the energy levels. And in case of these energy levels, we say, sir, electrons are present. If we say this is a band diagram of semiconductor, we say electrons are present inside these energy levels. Okay, in each energy level, two electrons are present. Now, my dear friends, this one is what we call the conduction band and in case of conduction band this is the lowest energy level and in case of case of valence band this is the highest energy level so we say this is the energy level of conduction band but which one that is minimum minimum energy level of conduction band this one is the maximum energy level of conduction band similarly this one is the maximum energy level of valence band ev this is the maximum energy level of valence band this is the minimum energy level of conduction band my dear people listen to me very carefully if you have to find how much is this energy band gap let me tell you how do we find exactly let me tell you how do we find exactly we say sir when it comes to the energy band gap eg this is equal to minimum energy level of this Conduction band, this, this has some value, this has some value, okay. So we say it is equal to the minimum energy level of conduction band minus we say maximum energy level of valence band, maximum energy level of valence band. I hope this is clear till over here. I hope this is clear till over here. This is what we call the energy band gap. If you have to find the energy band gap, what will you do? The value of this energy level, the value of this energy level, this minus this, you will get the energy band gap. I'll complete the 12th portion also. Don't worry, chill. I'll complete the 11th portion also. Chill scenes. First of all, finish this chapter. And what if there is any topic which is left from any of the previous chapters, we'll complete those also. Chill scenes. We have the new series that is coming up. Everything will be sorted. Chill. All the people out here, out there listen to me very carefully focus on this particular chapter as of now don't keep on spamming over there let me tell you okay i'm moving in a sequence every question will be answered okay first let me complete this first let me finish this now see so this is what we call this is what we call the energy band diagram for semiconductors my dear people we say, we say, we say, sir, in case of these energy levels, electrons are present. But let me tell you in case of semiconductors, we say, sir, we say, sir, at zero Kelvin, at zero Kelvin, listen to me very carefully. We say this valence band, valence, valence band is completely filled. We say if you take a semiconductor over there, if you have not increased the temperature in case of any semiconductor, so we say at zero Kelvin, at zero Kelvin, we say, we say, we say it is filled with the electrons, valence band is filled with the electrons. 
we say completely failed completely failed and what about the conduction band we say sir conduction band conduction band conduction band is completely completely empty my dear people this conduction band at zero kelvin is completely empty when it comes to the semiconductors now over here i just want to tell you one thing sir the electrons present see the electrons let's suppose there are electrons present in this conduction band we say the electrons present the electrons present in the conduction band are called are called are called we say sir we say sir free electrons free electrons sir if there are electrons present in this conduction band which as of now are not but those electrons are what we call the we say free electrons free electrons which make electricity which make electric current and what about these electrons sir which are present in the valence band we call these electrons as bonded electrons over here i'll just write the electrons present in valence band are called are called we say bonded bonded electrons bonded electrons okay okay now my dear people my dear people is this clear till over here is this clear till over here is this clear till over here now listen to me very carefully one more thing i just want to tell you let's suppose if we increase the temperature over here by any means you have got the semiconductor you are increasing its temperature so if we increase the temperature let's suppose we are increasing the temperature over here and if we increase the temperature we say listen to me very carefully at 300 kelvin we say if we increase the temperature we say sir if you keep on increasing the temperature in case of semiconductor material we say sir these electrons will shift these electrons will shift from valence band to the conduction band these electrons will shift from valence band to the conduction band so we say if you increase some temperature we say these bonded electrons will break and they will shift to the conduction band now this electron will go over here so it will be present over here this electron will reach over here now from now onwards you will remember that if you have to basically send the electrons from valence band to the conduction band you have to increase the temperature so i'll write over here if we increase the temperature we say electrons shift from valence band to conduction band valence band to conduction band now my dear people one more important information i want you people to keep in your mind is that we say sir at 300 kelvin at 300 kelvin we say if the temperature has been increased to 300 kelvin we say now the electrons present in the conduction band will be equal to the electrons present in valence band so many electrons have shifted to the valence to the conduction band so so at 300 kelvin we say we say we say we say valence we say conduction band conduction band is is partially partially filled and valence band is partially filled also or you can say partially empty so we say if you increase the temperature the electrons will shift over here so now electrons will get occupied inside this okay now my dear friends on increasing the temperature we say sir electrons will shift over here and these electrons i already told you the electrons present in the conduction band are called free electrons now these are the free electrons and free electrons are those electrons which make electricity which constitute electricity so we say in this case the the conduction the conductivity of the semiconductor has been increased so on increasing the temperature on increasing the temperature we say the conductivity of the semiconductor is increased why because the electrons are present in the conduction band right now so we say these electrons only produce current electricity which are present if i say no electrons are present in the conduction band will there be current electricity no 
okay so we say we say we say we say one more point we say we say holes are created created in valence band holes are created in valence band sir what does hole mean my dear people listen to me very carefully if i say the electron is shifting from valence band to the conduction band so over here we say the hole is being created what does hole mean hole means the vacant space if let's suppose electron was present over here it left this place what is present over here nothing so we say we say nothing that is vacant space is present over here that's what we call the holes so if i say four electrons are shifted how many holes have been created we say sir four holes have been created and one more important point i just want to tell you we say sir holes have have positive charge positive charge sir how can you say hole has positive charge hole is a vacant space hole means nothing if i say you have got an electron over here electron let's suppose you have got a sphere over here on the sphere you have got plus 3 coulomb charge minus 3 coulomb charge if you if you remove this minus 3 coulomb charge from this particular sphere what is the charge which is now present on this one this becomes positively charged that's why i say if you have got a space over here and if negative charge left that space what is the charge which will be occupied over there we say sir positive charge that's why we say hole has got the positive charge hole has got the positive charge is that clear is that clear let me know in the chats guys hole is basically the deficiency of electrons is this clear so as of now i told you about the band diagram of semiconductor sir how does the band diagram of semiconductor look like you have got the conduction band you have got the valence band at zero kelvin no electron is present in the conduction band but valence band is completely filled now if you increase the temperature electrons will shift from valence band to the conduction band and holes will be created over here and conductivity of the semiconductor is increased is this clear is this clear everybody guys enough enough come over here now we have the material that's what we call the conductors how does the band diagram of conductors actually look like i told you for different materials the band diagram looks like different so over here let's now discuss the band diagram of conductors listen to me very carefully let's suppose we have got these energy levels we took a conductor and we are making its band diagram now these are the energy levels over here also these are the energy levels over here also my dear people i just want to ask you one single question in this particular case i say i say sir from this level to this level this is what we call the conduction band and from this level to this level this is what we call the valence band could you please tell me the difference between the band diagram of conductors and band diagram of semiconductors could you please tell me the difference between the band diagram of conductors and band diagram of semiconductors energy gap in this case is either you say less very small or you say zero in this case we say sir energy band gap is zero no energy band gap over here we say sir energy band gap between the conduction band and valence band is there but in case of in case of conductors energy band gap is very energy band gap is zero yes they are overlapping they are overlapping now my dear friends we say sir when it comes to the conductors when it comes to the conductors listen to me very carefully we say sir we say conduction band is completely completely filled and valence band is completely completely filled sir in case of semiconductors you said valence band is completely filled and conduction band is completely empty at zero kelvin but over here we say this conduction band is also filled with the electrons and valence band is also filled with the electrons because this is a conductor as i told you conductor has got so many number of free electrons 
free electrons means the electrons which are present in the conduction band. So we say over here, sir, these are the free, these are the bonded electrons in this valence band, and these are the free electrons over here. Now, my dear friends, that's why we say when it comes to the current, this this current is conductivity of this is very large. Why? Because it has got conduction band which is completely filled. Now, now in this case, if we say, if we say, if we say, if temperature is increased, if we increase the temperature, what's going to happen in this particular case? We say, sir, we say, sir, these electrons, bonded electrons will basically shift to the conduction band. Bonded electrons from valence band will shift to the conduction band. My dear people, so we say hole will be created over here. Hole will be created over here. But, but, when there are so many free electrons present in the conduction band, every free electron wants to become bonded electron. Everything, everything in this universe wants to become stable. If we say, if you increase the temperature, these electrons will shift from valence band to the conduction band. But already in the conduction band, so many free electrons are present. So, over here, any of the free electrons will actually see the vacant space is present. So, it will go and it will occupy himself in that vacant space. And this happens in a very small amount of time. So, we say if temperature is increased, we say holes are produced. Holes are produced, but, but, life span of hole is very small very small lifespan of hole is very small if you increase the temperature over here hole is created but that gets occupied within a very small of time once again within a very small amount of time once again let me let me explain it once again see i'm saying i'm saying if you increase the temperature over here let's suppose we say, sir, this bonded electron will shift to the conduction band from valence band. Hole will be created over here. But, but, this hole will be occupied very soon once again. How? Because another electron from conduction band will shift over here. Sir, why will the electron shift from conduction band? Because so many free electrons are present over there. The free electron wants to become the bonded electron. That's why it will come and it will be occupied in this case. So that's why we say lifespan of hole is very small in this case. Tell me in the chats guys, is this crystal and clear? Is this crystal and clear? So we say, we say in this case, in this case, electron hole pair. What does electron hole pair mean? My dear people, in case of semiconductors, if you increase the temperature, electrons will shift from valence band to the conduction band. So we say electron whole pair electron hole pair is created so on increasing the temperature in case of semiconductors electron hole pair is created but in this case we say sir electron hole pair remains constant remains constant why am i basically telling you this story over here sir is this important when it comes to the semiconductors Theory is very, very, very important because I will be showing you the questions over here, tons and tons of questions, previous year questions, which have been directly asked from this theoretical part. Okay, directly. A certain reason have been asked in the aims from this theoretical part. That's why I'm telling you each and every single point over here. And you have to listen to this. You have to keep note of this. Everybody out there. Sir, in sem semiconductors, why free electrons do not occupy the holes? Because in case of semiconductors, there are less free electrons present in the conduction band. That's why they do not get occupied into the holes. But in case of conductors, this is filled. This is filled with the free electrons. That's why the chances are there, it will get occupied into the hole. This is the answer to your question. Now, now come over here. Band diagram for insulators. Let's talk about the insulator. So we have got the band diagram. Let me make it over here. So these are the energy levels. These are the energy levels. Can you tell me the difference between the band diagram of conductors and insulators? Guys, can you tell me the band difference between the band diagram for conductors and insulators? What is the difference over here? 
what is the difference over here sir in this particular case we can see this energy band gap this energy band gap is very large this is greater or equal to 3 electron volts so we say in case of insulators energy band gap is very large energy band gap is very large and my dear friends when it comes to the insulators we say this is the valence band and this is the conduction band we say valence band is completely filled okay valence band is completely filled and conduction band is completely empty okay in case of insulators we say sir conduction band is completely empty and when it comes to the valence band we say sir valence band is completely completely filled now if you say if you say sir if we increase the temperature these electrons will go to the conduction band we say no even if you increase the temperature over here these electrons will not be able to cross this gap and reach conduction band because this band gap is very large so we say on increasing the temperature the electrons the electrons from valence band from valence band will not be able able to reach will not be able to reach conduction band because of large band gap because of large energy band gap is this clear to each and everyone is this clear to each and everyone guys if you have not liked the session i want you guys to like it as soon as possible hit the like button everybody out there okay mark the attendance because that is mandatory i want everyone to like this particular session all the people out there everybody hit the like button okay so this was the detail complete detail about the band diagrams okay so many questions have been asked from this band diagrams that's why i told you about this now this is very important this is very important i want you guys to take a look over here i want you guys to keep your mind over here this chart is very important listen to me very carefully we are taking the material over here we say conductors and we are taking the material over here we say semiconductors now this is the temperature my dear people listen to me very carefully let's suppose i am taking let's suppose go and watch what is semiconductors that is what i discussed almost 30 minutes before so we say if we let's suppose increase if we let's suppose increase the temperature in case of conductors we say what's gonna happen to these particular quantities and and if we decrease the temperature we say what's gonna happen over here that's what we need to discuss this is very important so we say let's suppose if we are increasing the temperature we have got a conductor over here i have got the conductor in my hand and and I am increasing the temperature in case of a conductor. In case of a conductor. Tell me one thing. What will happen to the electron hole pair? Recently I told you. Sir, electron hole pair remains constant. Electron hole pair remains constant. Sir, we say in this case, if this is a conductor, increase if you increase the temperature, electron from valence band will shift to the conduction band. But that, elect, that whole hole gets occupied once again in a very small amount of time. So we say electron hole pair remains constant. Tell me one thing. What will happen to the randomness? See, you know it. You have studied this in your chemistry also. If you increase the temperature, we say vibrations increase. We say randomness increases. Okay. Randomness increases inside, an induct, inside a conductor. Okay. So, if randomness increases, my dear friends, we say, let's suppose we have got, let's suppose we have got a conductor over here, okay? And inside the conductor, we have atoms, molecules, ions over here, and these are the free electrons which are moving, let's suppose, over here. My dear people, if we increase the temperature, we say, sir, randomness, collisions will increase. 
randomness vibrations will increase over here. So these electrons, free electrons, which produce the current electricity will suffer more collisions. Will suffer more collisions. Will suffer more collisions. Will suffer more collisions. Okay. We say these free electrons will suffer more collisions. Is this visible guys? Yes, dark mode is on. So we say these free electrons will suffer more collisions. And if they suffer more collisions, what will happen to the resistance? We say, sir, resistance in that case will increase. Resistance in that case will increase. Because they are now facing more resistance over here, more collisions over here. And what will happen to the conductivity? We say, sir, if resistance increases, we say conductivity will decrease. If resistance will increase, we say, sir, conductivity will decrease. So, we say, sir, conductivity will decrease. Now, what will happen to the drift velocity? This is the point over here. Listen to me very carefully. My dear people, when it comes to the drift velocity, we say, sir, drift velocity is Vd. The formula for drift velocity is Ee divided by m into tau. E is the charge on an electron. Capital E is the electric field applied. M is the mass, mass of an electron, we say sir, tau is the relaxation time. And what is this time? This is the time between two successive collisions. Listen to me very carefully. Let's suppose I have got the conductor over here. I have got the conductor over here. Now, this electron is basically suffering the collisions over here. We say, we say, if you increase the temperature, now this electron will suffer more collisions. Collisions will happen more fastly now. We say sir over here you have got sir let's suppose ions. This will collide with this one first then this will collide with this one first. Now my dear friends then afterwards it will collide with this one first. We say sir time between the two successive collisions. Between two successive collisions. Between two collisions how much is the time? That is what we call the relaxation time. My dear friends, if we say temperature increases, collisions will increase. We say, sir, now it will collide very fast. So we say relaxation time in this case will decrease. Why? Because the time between two collisions, two successive collisions will decrease. If collisions are happening more fastly, we say the time between two successive collisions. Let's suppose collision was happening uh, between the two collisions. The time was, let's suppose, four seconds. Now between the two successive collisions, if the collisions increase, the time is only two seconds. So we say on increasing the temperature, this relaxation time will decrease. And if relaxation time decreases, the drift velocity will decrease because it is directly proportional to this. If this is creating some sort of confusion in your mind, just remember it directly. We say, sir, drift velocity in this case will decrease. Why drift velocity in this case will decrease? We say, sir, because, because drift velocity is directly proportional to relaxation time. If relaxation time decreases, drift velocity decreases. My dear people, I don't want to waste the time over here. What I'm trying to say is that if you have got a conductor, if you increase the temperature, we say electron hole pair will remain constant. We say, sir, randomness will increase, vibrations will increase. Sir, if vibrations increase, collisions increase, electrons suffer more collisions, we say resistance will increase. And if resistance increases, we say conductivity will decrease. Conductivity is the opposite of resistance. And what is what about drift velocity? It will decrease because relaxation time decreases. Guys, tell me in the chats. If this is clear, is this is this portion clear? Is this portion clear? Because this is this is very important. I want you guys to tell me over here, is this portion clear? Everybody with the fire emojis, then only I am moving forward. Is this clear? Is this clear? Is this clear? Yes, yes, I'll take the optics, bro. Please tell me first, is this clear? Everybody out there. Okay, okay, great, great, great. Now, now, let's talk about what about if we decrease the temperature. Sir, in case of conductors, if we decrease the temperature, what about the electron hole pair? Sir, it will remain constant. Even if you increase, if you decrease, it will remain constant. Now, what about the randomness, sir? 
sir if you in decrease the temperature we say sir randomness decreases because over here randomness increases on increasing the temperature so vibrations will decrease now the electrons which are moving the electrons which are moving inside the conductor these electrons which form electricity will suffer less collisions now if they suffer less collisions we say sir resistivity resistance will decrease what about the conductivity if resistance decreases conductivity will increase and what about the drift velocity we say sir drift velocity will increase drift velocity will increase why because drift velocity is directly proportional to relaxation time if if collisions decrease relaxation time decreases drift velocity decreases this is done let's talk about the semiconductors right now if we say my dear friends if we increase the temperature in case of a semiconductor let's suppose you took a semiconductor material over here what will happen to the electron hole pair sir we have already discussed we have already discussed one thing what is that let me just tell you over here listen to me very carefully what is that sir let's suppose we make the energy band diagram over here in case of the semiconductors this is the conduction band this valence band if you increase the temperature we say sir the electrons will shift from conduction valence band to the conduction band so we say holes are created and electrons are created electron hole pair is created so on increasing the temperature we can say sir electron hole pair will increase sir what about the randomness sir, randomness always increases if you increase the temperature we say randomness will increase vibrations will increase okay and collisions will increase now my dear friends what about the conductivity in this case sir in this case conductivity will increase why because if if more electrons are present over here on sending the electrons from valence band to the conduction band we say these electrons are those electrons which constitute electricity which produce electricity now if you are increasing the conduction if you are increasing the electrons in conduction band we say current electricity will increase that's why in this case conductivity will increase and if conductivity increases we say sir resistance will decrease and what about the drift velocity sir drift velocity will decrease why because on increasing the temperature vibrations randomness will increase collisions will increase relaxation time will decrease and drift velocity will decrease is this clear guys is this clear guys about the semiconductors is this clear let me know in the chats is this clear everybody out there guys where is that josh people see when it comes to the semiconductors on increasing the temperature electron hole pair will increase means more number of electrons will be transferred over here okay more number of electrons will be transferred in the conduction band and the more electrons present in the conduction band means conductivity will be more so we say sir conductivity will increase if conductivity increases resistance will decrease and what about drift velocity drift velocity decreases on increasing the temperature this is what i told you already now now come over here sir in case of semiconductors if we decrease the temperature if we decrease the temperature what will happen to the electron hole pairs we say sir electron hole pairs will decrease okay what will happen to the randomness sir obviously randomness will decrease randomness will decrease vibrations will decrease collisions will decrease now my dear friends if electron hole pairs are decreasing no electrons are present in the conduction band we say sir conductivity will decrease and if conductivity decreases we say sir resistivity will increase resistance will increase resistance will increase and if resistance will increase and what about drift velocity sir on decreasing the temperature we say sir drift velocity will increase is this clear we are done with this particular topic is this clear to each and everyone tell me guys is this clear to each and everyone let's move on to the next topic that's what we call that's what we call the types of semiconductors that's what we call the types of semiconductors i hope the previous slide is crystal and clear because there are so many surgery reason questions which have been asked from the previous slide 
That's why that is important. I want you guys to take the note of that previous slide on your copy, okay? Make it exactly like I have made it on the screen. Now listen to me very carefully. Let's move on to the next topic. That's what we call, that's what we call, we say, we say types of semiconductors. That's what we call the types of semiconductors. My dear people, when it comes to the types of semiconductors, over sure, over sure, we say there are two types of semiconductors. First one is this intrinsic semiconductor or we call it the pure semiconductor. And next one is what we call the intrinsic, sorry, this one is intrinsic semiconductor or pure semiconductor. Next one is what we call the extrinsic semiconductor or this is what we call impure semiconductor. Impure semiconductor. Pure semiconductor and impure semiconductor. Let's first discuss about the intrinsic semiconductors or the pure semiconductors. Listen to me very carefully. Let's finish this in tw next 20 minutes. Let's suppose, let's suppose we have got a pure semiconductor over here. Sir, how does actually pure semiconductor look like? Let's take an example. We say the silicon is the pure semiconductor. Okay, let's take pure silicon. Okay pure silicon. Silicon is actually a material which is considered to be the pure semiconductor. And how do we make it impure? That we'll see later on. So I'll make the crystal of, I'll make the crystal of silicon in this case. So let's suppose this is SI, 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 okay, pure silicon. And when it comes to the silicon, it has got four valence electrons. What does that mean? It shares the four electrons with the neighboring silicon. Okay, listen to me very carefully, my dear friends. If you have got the pure silicon over here, let's suppose, let's suppose we say, we say, we say at, we say at room temperature, room temperature, this silicon, this silicon crystal, crystal, this silicon crystal has some electrons and holes present. Let's say at room temperature, this silicon, this pure silicon has some electrons and holes present. Okay, we are taking a semiconductor. We know, sir, in case of semiconductors, electrons or holes are present. We say at room temperature, we are assuming some, some. We say, sir, holes. Let me show that hole over here. And electrons, this is the electron, this is the electron over here. Some electrons and holes are already present, okay? Let's suppose some four electrons, four holes, 50 electrons, 50 holes, something like that, okay? Now, my dear friends, my dear friends, my dear friends, what I'm trying to say is that I'll make this crystal over here something like this. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. I'll make this silicon crystal something like this. This is how do I exactly make it. This is the silicon crystal. Okay. This is the same. This is the crystal and this is the material over here. We say sir at room temperature already some holes. Already some holes and electrons are present. Already some holes and electrons are present. Electron hole pair is already present. Now what I am trying to do in this case is that I want you guys to basically connect a battery to this particular semiconductor. I want you guys to basically connect the battery to this particular semiconductor over here okay connect a battery sir what will the battery do battery will basically create external electric field we know sir this battery will set up the external electric field from positive terminal to the negative terminal okay now similarly i will show you over here i am setting up the external electric field in case of this pure silicon listen to me very carefully you are a semiconductor we are discussing. We have to see current electricity. How much is the current which is being produced in case of pure silicon? Yes, you take the pure silicon, pure germanium, one and the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. I took the pure silicon over here. Now, my dear friends, we know that whenever the electric field is set up over there, whenever the electric field is set up over there, sir, on these electrons, 
force will act in the opposite direction. Force will act in the opposite direction. Okay, this is the force acting in the opposite direction. If you place the negative charge inside electric field, force acts in the opposite direction. Same is the case over here. Sir, force on this electron will act in the opposite direction, in this direction. So this electron will move something like this and will get occupied into this hole. So if you are applying the external electric field to something like this, electron will move and will get occupied into the hole. This electron will get occupied into this hole. This will get occupied into this hole. This will get occupied into this hole. Now, my dear friends, we say, we say, I can write over here on applying the external electric field, on applying the external electric field, we say, we say, electrons, electrons gets occupied, occupied into the holes, into the holes. Electrons gets occupied into the holes. Now listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. If electrons get occupied into the holes, if electrons get occupied into the holes, we say, sir, electrons are moving over here. Electrons move, move from this side to this side. Electrons move from this side to this side. And, and, and. If we say, sir, if we, if we check over here, if electron is present initially over here, it gets occupied in this place. Now, don't you think that now hole will be created at this position? Yes. So we can say, sir, if electron is moving from this point to this point, it looks like hole is moving from this point to this point. So we say, we say, as it looks here, hole is also, also moving opposite to the direction opposite to the direction of electron. Hole is also moving opposite to the direction of electron. Now, my dear friends, if you say, sir, electron is moving over here, hole is moving over here, can we not say, sir, charge is moving over here, so current will be produced. So, current is produced due to motion, motion of electrons and holes. Current is produced due to the motion of electrons and holes. So can I say in this particular case, sir, net current will be, sir, current due to electrons plus current due to holes, 110%. I can say it's something like that. Current due to electrons plus current due to holes. Now, now, in this case, in this case, my dear people, as we have studied, when it comes to the current, we say, sir, current is equal to N T A V D. This is the formula for current, okay? This is the formula for current in terms of drift velocity. We say n is the number of free electrons, v per unit volume, e is the charge on an electron, a is the area of cross section, vd is the drift velocity. Okay, so can we just write over here, sir, this net current will be simply, instead of ie, I can write n, e, a, vd, and this will be, sir, electrons, this is the current due to electrons, plus we can say, sir, n, E, A, we say, sir, V, D, this will be the current due to holes. Now, my dear friends, we can say one more thing I just want to remember over here. I want you guys to remember that is, we say, sir, mobility is equal to drift velocity divided by electric field. Sir, what is drift velocity? Drift velocity means with which electrons are drifted, with which electrons move. Now, in this case, can we say, sir, this drift velocity will be simply mobility into electric field. Now you'll say, sir, what is mobility? Mobility means ability to move. We say, sir, electron, if you have a fat person over here, and if you have a slim person over here, we say, sir, which one is free to move? Which one is able to move more fastly? We say, sir, slim person. So why? Because he is not fat. His mass is less as compared to the fat person. So we say mobility of Slim person is less than the mobility of fat person. So my dear friends, we can write over here, sir, I net is equal to N E A. Instead of drift velocity, we can say mobility of mobility of electrons into electric field. Okay. Plus we can say in this case, sir, N E A. Instead of this drift velocity, I can say 
mobility of holes into we say sir electric field now can you take what is which one you can take common over here you can take nea into e all of these terms you can take common so what remains over here that is mu e plus we say sir mu h mu e plus mu h this will be the net current in case of pure semiconductors this is the net current in case of pure semiconductors and remember one thing my dear friends when it comes to the mobility of electrons it is much much greater than mobility of holes why because 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 we say mass of electron is much much less than mass of hole hole has got more mass hole has got positive charge and hole has got more mass so its mobility is less as compared to the mobility of electron so we say this is the net current in case of your semiconductor tell me in the chats is this crystalline clear we say this is the net current in case of pure semiconductor pure semiconductor or you say intrinsic semiconductor so in case of intrinsic semiconductor we say current is because of the electrons and current is because of the holes okay and how much this current will be this current will be very small why because the number of electrons and number of holes at room temperature inside a semiconductor is very small so this current will be very small guys tell me in the chats if this is crystal and clear to each and everyone i want everybody to tell me over here and all the people out there like this particular session if you have not liked it yet is this clear and and will be very small this current will not be very huge it will be small why because the number of holes and electrons at room temperature are very small in case of semiconductor Now let's come on to let's come on to extrinsic semiconductor. Let's come on to we say extrinsic semiconductor, or you can call this semiconductor as impure semiconductor. You can call this semiconductor as impure semiconductor. Okay. Now listen to me very, very, very carefully. Listen to me very, very, very carefully. See. Guys, when it comes to the extrinsic semiconductor or impure semiconductor, this is further of two types. First one is N-type and next one is we say sir P-type semiconductor. N-type and P-type semiconductor. Listen to me very carefully. Sir, first we say when it comes to the extrinsic semiconductor, I'll just write over here. If impurity if impurity is added to pure semiconductor, if impurity is added to pure semiconductor, it becomes, it becomes impure semiconductor. Impure semiconductor. So if impurity is added to the pure semiconductor, it becomes impure semiconductor or it becomes extrinsic semiconductor. Now, why do we have to make an impure semiconductor? Because in order to increase its conductivity. Listen to me very carefully. Let's suppose I am taking a pure silicon. Let's take, let's take pure silicon. Sir, why do we have to take pure silicon? Because we'll take the pure semiconductor only. And we'll make that pure semiconductor as impure. So let me basically make it something like this. This is SI, SI, SI. This is SI. This is SI. This is SI. Okay. This is the silicon crystal over here. So I'm making this silicon crystal over here. So this is the pure silicon over here. Now listen to me very carefully. When it comes to the pure silicon, 
I say over here, I say over here, silicon has four valence electrons. Sir, what does that mean? We say silicon is sharing four electrons with the neighboring silicon over here. One, two, we say over here three, and we say over here four. So if silicon has to remain stable in this particular crystal, if silicon has to fit in, in this particular crystal, it should have four valence electrons, which it actually has. Now, my dear friends, listen to me very carefully. These are the only lights I have in the room right now because the electricity is gone. When the electricity comes, then only I would be able to uh, increase the lighting over here. Sorry. Okay, because this is the winter time and this is the winter right now. So that's why we have the electricity problems over here in Kashmir. Okay, wait for some time. It will come in just half an hour. Now listen to me very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> now listen to me very carefully so we say if you have got the silicon over here it has got the four valence electrons now my dear friends this is the pure silicon you have to make the n-type semiconductor n-type means extrinsic extrinsic means impure what do we do in this particular case we say add pentavalent pentavalent impurity Sir, what is pentavalent impurity? Like we say, sir, phosphorus. At pentavalent impurity, we say phosphorus. Okay. Sir, sir, when it comes to the phosphorus, what does pentavalent impurity actually mean? What does pentavalent impurity actually mean? This pentavalent impurity means which has got five valence electrons. Okay. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. And, and, this is called, this process, process is called, is called doping. Sir, what does doping mean? Doping means adding the impurity, adding the phosphorus over here. Listen to me very carefully. If you are adding the phosphorus in this particular case, if you are adding the phosphorus into this crystal, phosphorus is an impurity. Which one? Pentavalent. Pentavalent means which has five valence electrons. Trivalent means which has three valence electrons. Tetravalent means which has four valence electrons. Listen to me very carefully. So we say in this case, if phosphorus has to fit into this particular crystal, how many valence electrons it should actually have? Sir, in order to fit into this particular crystal, in order to become stable into this particular crystal, phosphorus should have only one, two, three, four electrons. Because four is the requirement. But how many electrons it has? We say five. So what will the phosphorus do? We say, sir, this is phosphorus. So this will basically lose one electron. We say, sir, minus one electron. It will lose one electron. And, and if someone loses the electron, we say it becomes positively charged. So we say it becomes phosphorus positive. And this is what we call the positive donor ion. This is what we call positive donor ion. Because it is donating the electron over here. So once you are adding the phosphorus in this particular case, in this particular case, listen to me very carefully. I'll show you over here. Listen to me very carefully. If you are, if you are, let's suppose donating the phosphorus over here. I'll make it over here. This is silicon. 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 This is the pure silicon, pure silicon, pure silicon. So we say, Let me make the crystal over here. Guys, like this session if you have not liked it yet. Okay, this is the pure silicon. My dear friends, if you have to add the phosphorus over here. So we say we can add the phosphorus over here. But the phosphorus should have only four valence electrons. One, two, three, four. You tell me one thing. If phosphorus has four valence electrons. Phosphorus has five. So one electron, it will basically donate over here. That I will show in this particular crystal over here. This is the phosphorus positive, And this is the electron which it donated. Why does it donate the electron? Because phosphorus has to get, phosphorus has to fit into this particular crystal over here. So this is the one electron. Now you tell me one thing. On, if you are adding one phosphorus, how many electrons are being donated? One. If you are adding two phosphorus, how many electrons are being donated? Two. 
Now we say, we say over here, we say over here on adding, on adding millions of phosphorus, millions of phosphorus. How many electrons will be donated? We say, sir, millions of electrons are donated. Millions of electrons are donated and these electrons are called the free electrons. Millions of electrons are donated. These electrons are called the free electrons. Now, sir, on adding the impurity, on by doing this process doping, we say millions of free electrons are now donated into the crystal. We say so, so conductivity. Conductivity of semiconductor. Semiconductor is increased. So we say conductivity of the semiconductor is increased. So why do we exactly add the impurity in order to increase the conductivity? So by doping, we increase the conductivity of a semiconductor. We increase the conductivity of a semiconductor. Is that clear, my dear friends? Now, now I want you guys to take a look at this particular point. I want you guys to take a look at this particular point. You tell me one thing, sir. If we say, sir, add to room temperature, add to room temperature. Listen to me very carefully, sir. Add to room temperature. Let's suppose it has some number of electrons present and some number of holes present. My dear friends, by adding the phosphorus impurity, now the electrons have increased. So I can write over here, if electrons have increased, I can write over here, majority, majority, majority charge carriers are called majority charge carriers in case of in case of we say n type so if you have to make the n type semiconductor you have to add pentavalent impurity so this becomes basically the n type semiconductor so majority charge carriers in case of n type are we say sir electrons why because maximum more number of electrons are present over here as compared to the holes because in this case and we say we say minority minority charge carriers are are we say electrons so we say sir number of electrons is much much greater than number of holes in this case because on adding the impurity we say sir electrons have been donated electrons have been donated so we say electrons number of electrons will in this case increase okay now my dear friends can you tell me if the number of electrons have increased electrons have got negative charge can you tell me what is the net charge of this crystal what is the net charge of this crystal everybody in the chats everybody in the chats everybody in the chats what is the net charge of the crystal What is the net charge of the crystal? I want you guys to tell me in the chats. Positive, negative, zero. Electrons have been increased over here. Why are you saying zero? Yes, minority charge carrier is holes. Yes, 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 sorry. Minority charge carriers are, 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 are holes, holes. Tell me. What is the net charge in this case? We say net charge in this case will be zero. Why, sir? Guys, guys, guys. We say if you are adding phosphorus, phosphorus has got which, what charge? We say, sir, positive charge. So if you are adding one phosphorus, we say one electron is donated. So on adding one positive charge, one negative charge is added. So net charge again will be zero, positive, negative. On adding million phosphorus means million positive charge, million electrons will be donated. So million positive charge, million negative charge, so net charge will be zero. Because, 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 we say, we say, because the reason over here is, we say number of electrons is equal to the number of donor ions. Number of donor ions means phosphorus is equal to the number of electrons. That is, that is, we say number of electrons is equal to the number of positive donor ions that's why net charge in this case is zero 
all of this theory is important every point is very very important is this clear is this clear to each and everyone the definition of hole is simply let's suppose if you have got an electron over here okay at this place and if you remove the electron from this place what will remain over here nothing that nothing is what we call the hole that vacant space is what we call the hole and we say positive charge will be now present in this vacant space why because if negative charge leaves some position positive charge gets occupied over there is that clear tell me guys deficiency of electron is whole is this clear what is the real and unreal positive charge huh Is this clear to each and everyone? Everybody, let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the live chat, everybody. Now, let's make the p-type semiconductor. So, we say on making the n-type semiconductor. Let's, if I say for making the n-type semiconductor, we have to add pentavalent impurity. And on making the p-type semiconductor, what do we have to, which, what do we have to take over here? We say, we say we have to take trivalent impurity, okay? We have to take trivalent impurity in this particular case. Okay? Okay? Okay, one more important point I just want to tell you over here. That is nothing but if we say the band diagram after doping. We say, sir, band diagram after doping. See? Let's suppose this is the conduction band and let's suppose this is the valence band. This is the valence band, okay? The above one is the conduction band. Now, my dear friends, my dear friends, we say, sir, at room, first of all, we say valence band is completely filled. Valence band is completely filled with the electrons. Let's suppose this is the n-type semiconductor. This is valence band and this is conduction band. We say valence band is completely filled and we say at room temperature, some electrons are present in the valence conduction band over here. So if some electrons are present, we say, sir, holes will be created over here. At room temperature, some electrons have already shifted to the valence band, to the conduction band. Now, my dear friends, now, my dear friends, by doping, by adding the impurity, we say, sir, electrons are now being increased these are the electrons by doping okay so i can write over here these are the electrons we say sir because of doping doping means adding impurity and these are the electrons at a room temperature room temperature okay okay i hope this 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 diagram is now clear this band diagram is now clear by doping, more electrons will be added. This is for n type. Okay. Now, come over here. Let's talk about the p type semiconductor. Listen to me very carefully. We say, let's take pure, let's take pure germanium. Okay. Pure germanium is also an intrinsic semiconductor. So let me basically take it over here. This is GE. This is GE. This is GE. This one, this one, this one. This one, this one, this one. Okay. Let me make the germanium crystal over here. This is the germanium crystal over here. This is the germanium crystal over here. This is the germanium crystal over here. Okay. Now, my dear friends, if you have to, if you have to make P-type semiconductor, let me just tell you, we say over here, on making, we say P-type semiconductor. On making P-type semiconductor, we say add, we say add 
ट्राइवैलेंट इंप्यूरिटी ट्राइवैलेंट इंप्यूरिटी सर विच वन इज ट्राइवैलेंट इंप्यूरिटी आई कैन राइट ओवर ह्योर दैट इज बोरोन ओके सो बोरोन इज अ ट्राइवैलेंट इंप्यूरिटी ओवर ह्योर मीन्स 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 इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर केस इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर केस If you are adding the trivalent impurity, means sir, boron has got boron has got three valence electrons. In order to fit into this particular crystal, if you add boron impurity to this particular crystal, it should have four valence electrons. It should have four valence electrons. Let's suppose this is the electron of germanium over here. Okay. so in order to fit into this particular crystal it should have four valence electrons but how many it has actually we say sir four so what's going to happen in this particular case listen to me very carefully listen to me very carefully when you basically add the boron over here let me just show you in this particular case over here when you add the boron over here let's suppose this is germanium crystal give me 2 seconds i'll make it fast this is germanium crystal so so this is the germanium crystal over here you have okay now inside this germanium crystal you are adding the boron okay now my dear friends boron is a trivalent impurity it has got three valence electrons so if boron has got three valence electrons only so we say in order to fit into this crystal it should have four valence electrons so what's going to happen in this case listen to me very carefully we said germanium is already stable over here germanium has got four now now this is the first electron of boron this is another one and this is another one it has got three only so we say this is the germanium over here germanium has got four valence electrons we say this germanium it will give this electron it will donate this electron and will give it to the boron it will give to the boron now boron has got how many over here we say sir four now if germanium gives the electron we say sir hole is being produced over here okay so my dear friends what i'm trying to say over here is on adding the trivalent impurity boron we say we say we say it will actually gain the electron it will accept the electron we say sir plus one electron so germanium will give it the one electron so it becomes it becomes sir boron negative if somebody accepts the electron it becomes negatively charged so boron negative this is what we call the negative negative acceptor ion negative acceptor ion okay and phosphorus is positive donor ion this is what we call the negative acceptor ion my dear people if this is the negative acceptor ion so we say we say the boron which you have added over here this becomes boron negative and this hole has got positive charge now i'll tell you the same point over here we say on adding we say on adding millions of boron sir by adding one boron by adding one boron over here how many like holes have been created one hole by adding millions of boron how many holes have been created we say millions of holes so we say sir on adding millions of boron we say millions millions of holes are created hole means positive charge millions of hole are being created over here okay so so we say conductivity conductivity increases why sir because hole have got positive charge means positive charge is increasing means conductivity is increasing over here now my dear friends can i say in this case so can i say in this case so we say sir if you are adding the boron sir holes have been created so we say in this case we say number of hole is much much greater than number of electrons because millions of holes are now present so can you tell me in the live chat majority charge carriers in case of p type will be electrons or holes tell me majority charge carriers majority charge carriers in case of 
इन केस ऑफ पी टाइप मेजोरिटी चार्ज कैरियर्स इन केस ऑफ पी टाइप इज 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 होल्स आर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वी से सर होल्स एंड इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द माइनॉरिटी इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द माइनॉरिटी माइनॉरिटी चार्ज कैरियर्स कैरियर्स आर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वी से माइनॉरिटी चार्ज कैरियर्स आर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वेन इट कम्स टू वेन इट कम्स टू बेसिकली पी टाइप सेमी कंडक्टर ओके okay that's why we say number of holes is much much greater than number of electrons and we say sir in this case number of holes is approximately equal to the number of acceptor ions number of acceptor ions means boron if you are adding 10 boron 10 holes are created if you are adding 10 boron 10 holes are created if you are adding million boron million holes are created we say sir this is number of electrons number of electrons is equal to the number of acceptor ions and one more point i just want you guys to remember is that we say net charge in this case will be zero why because if you are adding 10 negative charge we say 10 holes are created means 10 positive charge are created so we say net charge will be zero in that case also tell me in the chats guys if each and everything is crystal and clear Let's move on to the assertion and reason right now. Is this crystal and clear? Is this crystal and clear? Is this crystal and clear? Everybody out there, in the chats, everybody, guys, is everything crystal and clear over here? Is everything crystal and clear over here? With the fire emojis. with the fire emojis and if you have not liked the session yet i want you guys to like the session as soon as possible make it 300 plus it is 268 right now make it 300 plus i want you guys to make it 300 plus as soon as possible everybody okay now when it comes to the assertion reason questions i hope everybody knows that sir in case of assertion reason everybody knows that everybody knows that we say sir option a means if assertion reason both are true and reason is the correct explanation of assertion reason is also true assertion is also true and reason is the correct explanation of assertion and option b means if both assertion and reason are true but reason is not the correct explanation of assertion option 3 means if assertion is true but reason is false option d means if both assertion and reason are false now let's move on to the questions let's solve this question first this was the question which was asked in aims 2015 metals are better conductors than semiconductors is this true or false metals are better conductors than metals are better conductors than semiconductors is this true or false we say true sir in case of metals we say sir conduction band is completely filled and in case of semiconductors conduction band is completely empty at 0 kelvin if you increase temperature then conductivity increases somehow but not equal to the metals so assertion is true in this case valence band and conduction band have large energy gap in case of metals is this true or false valence band and conduction band has large energy gap in case of metals sir in case of metals in case of conductors energy band gap is zero it is zero so reason is false assertion is true so which option is correct option c option c because option c says when assertion is correct reason is false that means option c this was the question which was asked in aims 2015 let's move on to this one if the temperature if the temperature of a semiconductor is increased its resistance decreases if the temperature of a semiconductor is increased 
its resistance decreases is this true is this true let's come on to this particular table which i have shown you over here if the temperature of semiconductor is increased its resistance decreases its resistance decreases over here you can see means it is true it is true why sir because if you increase the temperature in case of semiconductors i have told you this is a semiconductor this is the conduction band and this is the valence band if you increase the temperature we say sir electrons will shift from valence band to the conduction band and if electrons are shifted to the conduction band we say conductivity increases conductivity increase means resistance decreases so this is true the energy band gap between conduction band and valence band in case of semiconductors is small is this true or false everybody out there i have told you this i have told you this the energy band gap in case of conductors in case of semiconductors is small yes in case of semiconductors energy band gap is small then only electrons are able to shift into the valence band into the conduction band in case of insulators we say energy band gap is very large in case of semi in case of conductors we say energy band gap is zero in case of semiconductors we say energy band gap is small okay so we say this is also true if assertion is true reason is true and reason is the correct explanation of assertion and means option a see guys if this band gap is small then only electrons will shift if band gap is let's suppose large we say electrons does not shift in that case so option a next can you tell me the answer of this question assertion conductivity of a semiconductor increases on doping does conductivity of a semiconductor increases on doping tell me conductivity of a semiconductor increases on doping yes or no yes we recently saw on adding the impurity we say majority charge carriers increase in case of n type electrons increase in case of p type holes increase so we say this is true on adding the impurity conductivity of semiconductor increases now tell me doping raises the temperature of semiconductor we say no doping does not see on adding the impurity we say free electrons will increase holes will increase but temperature will not increase in this case we say if assertion is true reason is false means option three is that clear c is correct tell me for a given applied voltage conduction current in n type semiconductor is more than that in p type semiconductor conduction current in n type semiconductor is more than in p type semiconductor reason mobility of electrons is greater than mobility of holes this is true sir mobility of electrons is greater than mobility of we say sir holes my dear people listen to me very carefully why because mass of electrons is much much less than mass of holes so we say mobility is more now if we talk about sir we have got n type over here we have got p type semiconductor over here sir in case of n type semiconductor if you say majority charge carriers are electrons okay majority charge carriers and in case of p type semiconductor majority charge carriers are holes now my dear friends we say sir mobility of electron is greater than mobility of hole means they are more free to move they are free to move easily so we say they constitute more current as compared to the holes so that's what it is saying for a given applied voltage conduction current in n type semiconductor in this case conduction current is more than the p type semiconductor is more than the p type semiconductor is this true yes in case this is true reason is also true means option a guys is this clear with the fire emojis if this is crystal and clear with the fire emojis everybody out there
ओके ग्रेट ग्रेट नाव लेट्स कम ऑन टू दिस वन दैट इज मास एक्शन लॉ एंड लेट मी Yes. First, let's discuss this mass action law. Listen to me very carefully. That's why I told you guys, when it comes to the semiconductors, the theoretical points are very important because see the surgeon reason, okay? And I'll show you afterwards. I'll show you afterwards. Let me show you. Let me show. You. Okay, this one, this one. This was the question which was asked in NEET two thousand nineteen. This was the question which was asked in me 2019. Can you answer this particular question? Which of the statement is true for P-type semiconductor? Which of the statement is true for P-type semiconductor? Okay. Electrons are majority charge carriers and trivalent atoms are the dopants. Electrons are the majority charge carriers and trivalent atoms are the dopants. Is this false or true? This is wrong. Sir, when it comes to the P-type semiconductor, when it comes to the p-type semiconductor we say trivalent is the impurity and holes are the majority trivalent is the impurity and holes are the majority let's check for the option b holes are the majority charge carriers and trivalent atoms are the dopants this is correct this one is false this one is false holes are the majority charge pentavalent no electrons are the majority charge pentavalent no so option b is correct why are you saying option c Option B, trivalent atoms are the dopants and, and holes are the majority charge carriers. Not electrons, holes are the majority charge carriers. Electrons are in minority. So this was the question which was asked in 2019. That's why theory is important from semiconductor perspective. Come over here. In an n-type semiconductor, which of the following statement is true? This was the question which was asked in NEET 2016. In an n-type semiconductor, in an n-type semiconductor, which of the statement is true? Holes or majority carriers and trivalent atoms are the dopants. No, we are talking about the n-type. In case of n-type semiconductor, when it comes to the impurity, we add phosphorus. Phosphorus is a pentavalent impurity. And we say electrons are majority charge carriers. So we say electrons are majority charge carriers, trivalent atoms are the dopants. No. Electrons are minority charge carriers and pentavalent atoms are dopants. No. Electrons are majority charge carriers. Holes are minority charge carriers and pentavalent atoms are dopants. Yes. When it comes to N type, holes are in minority and pentavalent atoms are the dopants. Pentavalent impurity is added. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, let me first complete this one first. Come over here. Yes, let's talk about this mass action law. Later on, we'll do the next questions. Is this clear? I hope I am making the semiconductor butter also. Huh? Smooth, crystal and clear. Semiconductors like never before. Okay. Now, come over here, my dear friends. Mass action law. What does mass action law actually mean? Yes. <laughs> what does mass action law actually mean? Now, see. We say according to this law, according to this law. Okay. If you read the statement from the book, it is very difficult to understand. But I'll, I'll make you understand over here. According to this law, we say if majority, if by doping, doping means adding impurity. If by doping, majority, majority charge carriers, majority charge carriers increase. If by doping majority charge carriers increase, what is the meaning of this statement? It means that if you have got a semiconductor, 
if you add the impurity, let's suppose pentavalent, we say electrons will increase. On adding million phosphorus, we say million of electrons are increased. We say majority will increase. And in case of P-type semiconductor, majority of holes, holes will increase. So that's what I'm saying. By doping, by doping means on adding impurity, majority charge carriers increase. In case of N-type, electrons increase. In case of holes, we say, in case of P-type, we say holes increase. Majority charge carriers increase. Then, minority, minority also decrease. Sir, what does this mean, minority also decrease? Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. Let me just show you over here. Let me just show you over here. Let's suppose you have got, you have got a band diagram. This is the band diagram of a semiconductor. Okay. This is the band diagram of a semiconductor. Okay. This is, we say, conduction band. And this is, we say, valence band. My dear friends, listen to me very carefully. We say, sir, this, this valence band is completely filled. This valence band is completely filled. Okay. And, and, and. Some holes have already produced over here because those electrons have shifted over here. So this is the electron in the conduction band which has moved from valence band. Now my dear friends, listen to me very carefully. This is at the room temperature. What I am trying to say is that we I am saying add the impurity. On adding the pentavalent impurity, you are increasing the electrons. So these are the electrons which have been increased because of doping. We say, sir, because of doping. We say, these are the electrons which have been increased because of doping. Now, you guys tell me one thing. Initially, I told you one single statement. That is, sir, if so many free electrons are present over here, sir, free electron always wanted to become the bonded electron. It always wanted to become the, the bonded electron. We say chances are there these free electrons, if this free electron sees this hole, it will want to get occupied into this particular hole over here. So the free electron wants to become the bonded electron. So it will shift from this to this. Now if I say, let's suppose this electron shifted from this and gets occupied into this hole. Listen to me very carefully, my dear friends. We say, we say, we say, over here, sir, if electron gets occupied into this hole. Previously, how many number of holes were there? One, two, three, four. Now, how many number of holes there? One, two, and three only. Similarly, this electron would want to get occupied into this hole. We say, sir, now how many holes are there? We say, sir, two. So, by doping, if you are increasing the number of free electrons, we say, Majority are increasing, majority charge carriers increase, but minority here, here, by doping, by doping, we say holes, holes are decreased. And holes means minority charge carriers. Guys, is this clear? Is this clear? Is this clear? So that's what I mentioned in this statement. According to this mass action law, this says that if you dope a semiconductor if you add the impurity we say majority charge carriers will increase but minority also decreases minority also decreases is this clear guys is this clear guys is this clear guys so what i am trying to say is that probability probability of electron hole recombination Probability of electron hole recombination decreases. Probability of electron hole recombination decreases. Probability of electron hole recombination decreases. Sorry, sorry, increases. Increases. Okay. Probability of electron hole recombination will increase. Okay. So, so we say minority will decrease. So we say minority will decrease. Now, now, my dear friends, we got it till over here. We got this particular statement. Okay. So we say, we say, we say, sir, to find, to find that 
to find those remaining remaining number of to find find those minority remaining minority charge carriers charge carriers we use the formula that is given by mass action law that is ne into nh is equal to ni square this is the formula we use my dear friends what i'm trying to say is that if let's suppose you have got a semiconductor if you are doping into that semiconductor we say sir majority charge carriers will increase so minority charge carriers will decrease if i say how many number of minority charge carriers are remaining over there on adding some impurity how much is the minority remaining how many number of holes are remaining over here like you have got two okay so we say how many number of holes are remaining how many number of electrons are remaining we say we use this formula that is given by mass action law i hope this is clear this will help us to find the remaining number of remaining number of we say uh, uh, minority now see now see if i talk about case one case one we say in case of n type n type sir when it comes to the n type semiconductor we know sir in case of n type number of electrons is equal to the number of donor ions number of electrons is equal to the number of donor ions listen to me very carefully donor ions means phosphorus if you have got a semiconductor over here that is n type means if you are adding the phosphorus number of electrons will increase on adding five phosphorus five electrons will increase now now what is the minority we say sir minority is minority is holes now my dear friends to find to find number of holes see if you are adding the phosphorus over here we say sir number of electrons will increase due to which minority will decrease according to the mass section law if minority will decrease how much how many number of holes will remain over here so we say n e into n h is equal to n i square now the question over here is what is n e we say sir n e is the number of holes per unit volume and when it comes to the n h it is sorry number of electrons and this is number of holes per unit volume and and my dear friends when it comes to this nh nh we can write over here sorry ni ni is intrinsic charge carrier density see intrinsic charge carrier density means it is basically the charge present inside a semiconductor before doping that will be electrons plus holes number of electrons plus number of holes is what we call the intrinsic charge carrier density charge carrier density before doping charge carrier density after doping is increased now my dear friends we say if we take an n type semiconductor in case of n type semiconductor we say minority charge carriers are holes so on adding the impurity holes will decrease how many number of remaining holes are there we can use this formula now see my dear friends listen to me very carefully we say instead of ne i can put nd this is number of donor ions into number of holes is equal to ni square now over here over here sir this number of holes will be sir ni square divided by we say sir nd now this is what we call this is what we call the number of holes remaining in case of in case of the n type semiconductor how to find number of holes now see let's suppose i have i am i am given a 
n type semiconductor over here i'll show you the question on this one also now intrinsic charge carrier density ni is let's suppose something 4.5 and 10 raised power something okay and you are adding the impurity in this case 1.5 into 10 raised power something per meter cube okay you are adding this now if i ask you how much is the remaining number of holes on adding the impurity you will divide intrinsic charge carrier density with the impurity added that is number of donor ions you will get the number of holes now now one more thing i just want to tell you over here if i say in case of if i say in case of p type semiconductor can i say sir minority is minority is we say sir electrons in case of p type minority charge carriers are electrons and we said to find to find number of electrons my dear friends if you increase the majority minority will decrease minority will decrease so we said to find the number of electrons in this case we use the formula sir n e into n h is equal to n i square now in case of p type semiconductor we know sir number of holes is equal to number of acceptor ions if you add five boron five holes are created if you add million boron million holes are created now put this over here so we'll get n e into this n a instead of this n h we'll write n a is equal to sir n i square so this number of electrons will be sir intrinsic charge carrier density divided by n a so in the question this will be given only this will be given only i'll show you the question on this one this will be given and this will be given you just have to find the minority in this case guys tell me in the chats is this clear is this clear is this clear everybody over there thanks man fawad money love you too bro means a lot is this clear to each and everyone is this clear tell me in the chats now let me basically give you the question on this particular thing something like this sir pure si at 300 kelvin has equal number of electron and hole concentration sir pure si you have got the pure semiconductor you have got the pure semiconductor you have got the pure semiconductor over here which has got equal electrons and hole concentration that means that is how much sir in this case ni is giving 1.5 into 10 raised power 16 this is intrinsic charge carrier density you have got a semiconductor intrinsic charge carrier density is 1.5 and 10 raised power 16 per meter cube these are the number of holes and electrons present at 300 kelvin intrinsic charge carrier density now after doping doping by indium it is doping by indium increases we say sir after doping number of holes become in this case we say sir increases nh to 4.5 into 10 raised power 22 per meter cube so you have basically got a semiconductor over here in this semiconductor you are doping okay in this semiconductor intrinsic charge carrier density is this much now on adding on doping doping if you are adding the impurity number of holes in the semiconductor has increased if number of holes majority increases we say sir minority decreases in this case and minority is in this case we say ne so here here ne is is minority and to find to find ne how do we find any in this case we say sir ne into nh ne into nh is equal to we say sir ni square okay simply sir this nh in this case will be this nh in this case will be how much that is 4.5 the impurity you are adding so we say sir we say ne will be in this case that is ni square divided by nh put the value of ni over here it's square put the value of nh over here it's square the answer will come out to be option first is this clear tell me in the chats 
Tell me in the chats. This is not the Hindi channel. This is the English channel. That's why you are getting confused. Round to head gaming. You are getting confused because I am teaching in English. And this is the unacademy neat English. I am not supposed to speak in Hindi over here. Is this clear? Is this clear to each and everyone? Tell me in the chats. Yes, J students can watch this also. So mass action law simply says, mass action law simply says, mass action law simply says, on adding the impurity, majority charge carriers increase and minority charge carriers decrease. Now to find those minority charge carriers, we use this formula. Now in case of N type, this is how do we find the minority charge carrier that holds. And in case of P-type, this is how do we find the minority charge carriers, that's electrons. Okay. Next question, we have this one. That was, this was asked in Ames 2014. Tell me the answer of this question. This was, this is the assertion reason. Tell me the answer of this question. This is the assertion reason. Tell me. Tell me guys. A surgeon in this case is in an extrinsic semiconductor doped with pentavalent impurity. Okay. If you have an extrinsic semiconductor doped with pentavalent impurity means which one we are talking about P type or N type? Which one we are talking about P type or N type? P type or N type doped with pentavalent impurity. Which one we say sir N type. If you have got a semiconductor doped with pentavalent impurity means we are talking about the n-type semiconductor okay we have got an n-type semiconductor let's suppose this is the n-type semiconductor okay my dear friends in case of n-type semiconductor can you tell me what is the minority over here we say sir minority in this case is minority in this case is we say sir holes so we say number of holes in this case is minority now if you are adding the pentavalent impurity, can we say, sir, majority charge carriers will increase and minority charge carriers will decrease. So we say over here, NH will, will decrease. Because according to the mass section law, minority charge carriers will decrease. So tell me, in an extrinsic semiconductor doped with pentavalent impurity and an intrinsic semiconductor, number of holes are same. Let's suppose this is the intrinsic semiconductor. Intrinsic semiconductor. And in case of intrinsic semiconductor, this is the band diagram. I'll give you the feel of this particular question. Very important. This was asked in Ames 2014. See, we say, sir, sir, these are the holes. Let's suppose these are the holes created over here. These are the holes created over here. And these are the electrons shifted. Okay. My dear friends, we say, we say number of holes is equal to the number of electrons in case of intrinsic semiconductor. Now in case of n-type semiconductor, if you have this conduction band and valence band, tell me in the chats, if you add the impurity, we say sir at room temperature, this is, at room temperature, this is the holes, number of holes are two. And these are the electrons present in the conduction band. Now, if you add the impurity, we say, sir, electrons will increase in the conduction band. If number of electrons increase in the conduction band, we say probability is that they will get occupied into these holes. So number of holes will decrease. So in this case, number of holes remain same. Number of holes decrease. So we say number of holes are not equal. Number of holes are not equal. We say in an extrinsic semiconductor doped with pentavalent impurity. In this case, number of holes decrease. And an intrinsic semiconductor number of holes are same. Number of holes cannot be same in case of this and this. Are you getting me or I am just wasting my time over here and yours also. Not yours, mine only. Tell me in the chats. Everybody, everybody with the, with the josh, with the fire emojis, everyone. Or I am confusing you. Tell me in the chats. Everybody guys. There are so many people watching. And few people are 
over here answering in the chats. So we say number of holes in this case cannot be equal to the number of holes in this case. Okay. Because in case of n type, when you add the impurity, number of holes decrease. So a surgeon is wrong. A surgeon is wrong. Reason number of holes doesn't depend upon the doping concentration. Does number of holes depend on doping concentration? Yes. Sir, when it comes to the number of, in case of P-type semiconductor, if you add boron, we say, sir, on adding the impurity, number of holes increase. On adding 5 boron, 5 holes are increased. So we say this is also wrong. So option D. Option D. Option D. Is this clear? Great. Now let's come on to the PN junction diode. Let's come on to the PN junction diode. Okay. Half of the semiconductor is done. Okay. Let's come on to the PN junction diode. Give me just two, not two minutes, one minute. Okay. I'll just come. Okay. I'll go to the washroom. Give me just a minute. Okay. Now see, listen to me very carefully. <clears throat> let's talk about, let's talk about, and guys, if you are not like the session, like it as soon as possible. Okay. Everybody, everybody. Let's talk about the PN junction diode. What does PN junction diode actually mean? PN junction diode means when P type and N type semiconductor when P type and N type semiconductor are joined together are joined together they form we say P N junction they form PN junction diode. Okay. The symbol of PN junction diode is this one. This is the P type and this is N type. 
तो वेन पी टाइप एंड एन टाइप सेमी कंडक्टर आर ज्वाइन टूगेदर दे फॉर्म दी पी एन जंक्शन डायोड लेट मी जस्ट शो यू ओवर श्योर लेट मी जस्ट शो यू ओवर श्योर तो वी हैव गॉट वी हैव गॉट इन दिस केस वी हैव गॉट इन दिस केस वी से पी टाइप सेमी कंडक्टर एंड वी हैव गॉट एन टाइप सेमी कंडक्टर ज्वाइन टूगेदर दिस इज वी से सर पी टाइप वी से सर पी टाइप We say sir P type and this is we say sir N type. Okay, P type and N type semiconductor are joined together and they form the P N junction diode. This is what we call the P N junction diode. Now you guys tell me one thing. You guys tell me one thing. When it comes to the P N junction diode, my dear friends. When it comes to the P N junction diode, my dear friends. We say sir. In case of P-type semiconductor, we can clearly say, sir, majority charge carriers are holes. These are the majority charge carriers in case of P-type semiconductor. Okay, and and we have studied, we have studied, sir. In case of P-type semiconductor, if you add five boron, boron has got, we say, sir, negative charge. We say, sir, five holes are created. So if I am making the six holes over here, so we say I'll make the six boron negative, six boron negative, six boron negative. Boron negative is the fixed fixed charge over here. And in case of n-type semiconductor, we say majority charge carriers are we say sir electrons. These are the electrons which are the majority charge carriers. And phosphorus is added. If phosphorus is the impurity which is added in this one. We say, sir, on adding five phosphorus, five electrons are created, and phosphorus has got positive charge. We say, sir, phosphorus positive because that is the positive donor ion. That is the positive donor ion. Okay, okay, okay. Now, my dear friends, you tell me one thing. You tell me one thing. If p-type semiconductor and n-type semiconductor are joined together, this has got majority charge carriers. This is what we call the majority. okay and these are what we call the fixed fixed ions okay and this is what we call the majority over here this is what we call the majority over here you tell me one thing my dear friends you tell me one thing my dear friends don't you think that when p type and n type are joined together sir these electrons will get occupied into the holes electron hole recombination will take place we say Over here, electron hole recombination. Electron hole recombination takes place. Okay, so these electrons will get shifted over here. These electrons will get shifted over here. Okay, I am showing with just two electrons and two holes over here. Actually, there are so many electrons and holes which get recombined over here. Now, my dear friends. if electrons and holes are recombined over here listen to me very carefully listen to me very carefully let me just show you the final figure that's what is being created in this particular case we say sir it will then look something like this 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 listen to me very carefully so we say we say we say so it will then look something like this so we say sir when electrons and holes are recombined so it will look something like this then see my dear friends if i say if i say these electrons are shifted over here this electron gets occupied into this hole this electron gets occupied into this hole what will remain from this side positive charge positive charge and these electrons means negative charge come over here what will come over here that is negative charge so i will show you over here sir positive charge will remain from this side in this line and negative charge will remain over here come over here in this line and from this side we have got this hole and this electron this hole and negative charge fixed charge this hole and negative fixed charge something like this this is electron and positive 
okay this is how does it actually look like why sir because when these electrons get shifted over here what remains in this line positive positive what will come in this line negative 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 so we say we say this is what we call the depletion region depletion region so i can clearly say over here sir when electrons and holes are recombined electrons and holes are recombined we say sir depletion depletion region is created depletion region is formed over here and depletion region is created over here depletion region is formed over here and depletion region is created over here we can say it something like that now now you tell me one thing you tell me one thing in this particular case in this particular case sir sir as the electrons and holes have shifted see electrons have shifted from n side to p side holes have shifted from p side to n side we say as as due to the due to the motion of electrons and holes electrons and holes due to the motion of electrons and holes electrons shifted from p n side to p side holes shifted from p side to n side due to the motion of electrons and holes we say current current is produced and is called and is called we say diffusion and is called diffusion current and is called diffusion current diffusion current is that current which is being produced when the electrons and holes recombine okay and this diffusion current and this diffusion current i'll just write over here guys tell me one thing you have i have told you in current electricity if this is the direction of motion of electrons current flows in the opposite direction current always flow opposite to the flow of electrons now if electrons flow from n side to p side we say current will flow from p side to n side so this diffusion is from is from we say p side to n side this is the diffusion current diffusion current is being produced okay let me again tell you the depletion region see let's suppose you have got you have got this p and n type semiconductor and in this p type semiconductor you have got these holes and in case of and these are the this is the negative charge this is we say that boron negative boron negative these are the holes and these are the electrons in p side these are the electrons in p side and this is the positive charge in p side that is phosphorus positive if i say this electron will shift over here and gets occupied into this hole now technically if this electron gets recombined into the hole gets moved into the moves into the hole so we have to rub this electron over here so what remains only this positive charge only this positive charge and if this electron gets recombined into this hole gets occupied into this hole so we have to rub this positive negative charge electron over here so what remains only positive charge now if electron is shifted over here so now electron is present over here now electron is present over here what is the charge on an electron positive or negative negative so instead of this e i'll show only with the negative charge negative charge instead of this upper e i will only represent this with the negative charge negative charge now tell me this part this part has got positive charge and negative charge and this is what we call the depletion region so that's what i showed you over here positive charge negative charge this is what we call depletion region is this clear now 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 come over here we say diffusion current is from p to n now my dear friends one more thing i just want to tell you in this particular case that is sir that is sir that is can you tell me sir whenever you have positive charge and negative charge separated we say we say electric field is set up we say electric field is always set up from positive charge to negative charge and this is what we call the internal electric field we say sir we say sir 
in the depletion region in the depletion region depletion region we say electric field is set up set up between we say positive and negative charge we say electric field is set up between positive charge and negative charge we say electric field is set up between positive charge and negative charge now you tell me one thing sir we know when it comes this is p side and this is n side in case of p type semiconductor we say sir electrons are in the minority this is these are the electrons and this is what we call the minority so we say these are the electrons and these are what we call the minority we know minority charge carriers in case of p type semiconductor is electrons and these are the minority over here sir what are these these are the majority holes and what is this negative charge this is boron negative boron negative okay i hope you remember it and in case of n type semiconductor we say sir holes are minority holes are minority okay and what is this one this is electrons and what is this positive positive this is phosphorus positive now because of this internal electric field sir now force acts on force acts on these electrons so they will flow something like this so we say whenever you place a charge inside the electric field force acts on that charge so because of this electric field force acts on these electrons now we say due to that electric field due to that electric field we say minority minority charge carriers minority charge carriers move these electrons will get shifted from p to n and holes get shifted from n to p due to that electric field minority charge carriers move and current is produced called we say drift current drift current now tell me what is the direction of drift current guys electrons move from p to n so direction of current is opposite to the direction of flow of electrons so direction of drift current is from n to p so we say this i we say this i drift is from i drift is from we say n to p is from n to p and and we say my dear friends after some time after some time this diffusion this diffusion current is equal to we say sir drift current drift current and we say net current in that case is zero okay i hope this is clear guys i hope this is clear sir diffusion current is that current which is due to the recombination of electrons and holes and drift current is that current which is due to the electric field tell me guys in the chats if this is crystal and clear so in case of pn junction diode we say net current is zero is that clear guys tell me in the chats everybody out there is that clear crystal clear guys all the people out there and make sure you hit the like button everybody out there okay make it 350 okay okay great now let's move on to the forward bias forward bias of pn junction diode let's move on to the forward bi bias of pn junction diode <laughs> Let's move on to the forward bias of PN junction diode. What does forward bias actually mean? See, let's 
finish this forward bias, okay? Let me just show you over here. Let's suppose this is a PN junction diode that we exactly have over here, okay? When it comes to the PN junction diode, we know, sir, it has P-type semiconductor and it has N-type semiconductor, okay? This is, let's suppose, P-type. This is, we say, sir, N-type, okay? And in case of P-type semiconductor, we say majority charge carriers are holes. And in case of N-type semiconductor, we say majority charge carriers are electrons, okay? And this is the depletion region. This is the negative charge in depletion region. And this is the positive charge in depletion region. These are the fixed ions. These are the fixed ions, bonded electrons, okay? Now, what I want you guys to do is that I want you guys to basically connect an external battery to this P, P N junction diode. I want you guys to connect an external battery to this P N junction diode. Connect a battery over here. Okay. This is the battery I'm connecting. This is the battery I'm connecting. Now see, listen to me very, very, very carefully. We have got the PN junction diode over here, okay? And I have connected the external battery to this PN junction diode. You tell me one thing. This is what we call the positive terminal and this is what we call the negative terminal. We say, sir, positive terminal of the battery is connected to P side. Negative terminal of the battery is connected to N side. So I write over here, when, when, Positive terminal of the battery is connected to P side and negative terminal is connected to N side. When positive terminal of the battery is connected to P side and negative terminal is connected to N side, positive terminal is connected to P side and negative terminal is connected to N side, the diode is said to be said to be forward biased. Forward biased. Okay. This is what does forward bias actually mean. Forward bias of PN junction diode is simply when P type semiconductor, when P side is connected to positive terminal, N side is connected to negative terminal. Now listen to me very carefully over here. Now what does this piece, what does this positive terminal actually do? See, directly remember it, one thing over here, this positive terminal basically sends kind of positive charge over here. It occupies the positive charge over here. This negative charge will basically send the negative charge over here. Negative charge will be occupied. Tell me one thing, sir, this positive charge and you have got the holes inside over here. We see, sir, holes also have got the positive charge. This positive will repel this positive. This negative will repel this negative. We say, sir, if this negative will repel this negative's N side, this positive charge will repel this P side. So tell me, will the depletion region in this case decrease or increase? Will the depletion region in this case decrease or increase? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. We say, dip here, depletion a region decreases. So we say in this case, a depletion region will decrease. Why? 
because this positive negative charge will push this one inside this positive charge will push these holes so depletion region will decrease and if depletion region decreases we say sir we say now this depletion region will become thin we say these electrons will get again recombined into the holes again electron hole recombination will take place so we say here depletion region decreases and electron hole recombination recombination takes place electron hole recombination takes place once again once again electron hole recombination takes place once again once again is that clear guys is that clear guys okay now my dear friends if electron hole recombination will take place once again we say we say in this particular case listen to me very carefully in this particular case we say sir now these electrons are present over here i'll i'll show these electrons like this these electrons are present over here so we say so many electrons will come to the p side what will happen to these electrons now now these electrons battery will basically attract these electrons now these electrons will flow through the battery and will reach the n side once again once again they are being pushed to p side again they will flow in a circuit and this is how current will be produced in case of forward bias so we say we say we say then i'll write over here then these electrons then these electrons will flow through the battery through the battery these electrons will flow through the battery and reach inside inside once again and the process continues and the process process continues tell me if this electron is moving from n to p then flowing through the battery in a loop don't you think that current is being produced over here so this is this is how current is produced is produced in forward bias in forward bias this is how current is produced in forward bias tell me guys in the chats if this is clear if this is clear to each and everyone sir current these electrons flow through the battery means current is being produced over here current is being produced over here current is being produced over here is this clear okay this is how current is exactly being produced in this particular case in this particular case okay one more point i just want to tell you over here don't you think that don't you think that sir when it comes to this forward bias Sir, internal electric field is from positive charge to negative charge. Everybody knows that. This is the internal electric field. This is the e internal. Okay. And when it comes to the external electric field, external, sorry, external electric field is from this positive charge to this negative charge. And this is the external electric field. This is the external electric field because of the battery. This external electric field is set up because of the battery. And because of this external electric field, only we say the, this charge exactly flows and current is being produced over here. Now, if I just tell you in this particular case, I'll just say graph, graph between we say current and voltage in case of, in case of forward bias. graph between current and voltage in case of forward bias let me just show you what is the graph exactly over here now the graph between current and voltage in case of forward bias is something like this see see let me just show you 
on this axis i show we say sir current and on this axis we say sir this is emf or potential difference now my dear friends listen to me very carefully let's suppose you have this battery over here it is giving 10 volts of potential difference so 10 volts of potential difference means it is occupying some positive charge over here some negative charge over here and some electric field will be created over here now if i say we are increasing this potential difference let's make it 20 volts sir on increasing this potential difference we say sir this is 20 volts now more positive charge is created more negative charge is created sir at more depletion region will decrease more electron hold recombination takes place more current will flow over here so we say my dear friends as we keep on increasing the potential difference we say current increases as we keep on increasing the potential difference we say we say listen to me very carefully we say we say more positive and negative charge is occupied more depletion region will decrease more electron hold recombination takes place more electrons will flow more current is produced so the graph between current and potential difference will increase something like this will increase something like this this is the graph between potential difference and we say current so let's suppose initially initially let's suppose let me show you something like this let let me show you something like this let's suppose initially we are giving some potential difference let's suppose 0.1 volt some current is flow so we say sir let's suppose at at we say 0.1 volts some current is being produced if you send more potential difference strong electric field strong charge more current is produced and and my dear friends listen to me very carefully if i say inside this one inside this voltage inside this let's suppose this has got 0.4 volt potential difference this electric field is also the potential difference over here separation between the charges so we say my dear friends if you are applying the external electric field which is stronger than this one so this will decrease this electric field this will decrease this barrier it will decrease this uh, we say uh, depletion region so then these electrons will cross over here so means 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 at certain voltage at certain voltage let's suppose sir sir let's suppose at 0.5 volts when you applied 0.5 volts you can see the graph of current the current is very large so we say on increasing the potential difference we say current increases so on increasing the potential difference current increases at certain value of potential difference at certain at certain value of potential difference current increased in large amounts current increased in large amounts that potential is called knee voltage knee voltage or we say it is also called the barrier potential this is also called the barrier potential or knee voltage is this clear guys is this clear so what I'm trying to say is that if in this case depletion region is decreasing means you are increasing the potential difference de depletion region is decreasing current is flowing so at certain value of potential difference we say sir current flows in large amounts more electron hold recombination takes place so that value of potential difference you say sir at this you can see current is very large current is very large is this clear guys everybody or simply you can just directly remember this is the graph between potential difference and voltage current and voltage in case of in case of forward bias in case of forward bias in case of forward bias this is the graph between current and voltage current and voltage okay okay 
I'll give you the break at 9 o'clock, okay? Let's first finish this entire semiconductor portion. So, then we'll take the break and after the break, we should have only logic gates, okay? After the break, we'll be completing the logic gates. So, before break, we have to complete each and everything. Now, see, one more point I just want to add over here. So we say, we say, we say, in case of forward bias, diode behaves like a simple Y. That is, current flows easily. That is, current flows easily over here. See, in case of forward bias, when you connected the battery over here, depletion region decreased. it. As you increase the potential difference, charge over here increased, charge over here increased. So, we said depletion region more decreases. So, more electron hole recombination takes place, more current flows in this case. And how to make the graph of current versus voltage? As you keep on increasing the current, we say, as you keep on increasing the potential difference, we say, sir, current is increasing, current is increasing. At certain value of potential difference, we say, sir, current is very large, okay? Okay, that is what we call the knee voltage or the barrier potential. Now, my dear friends, let's talk about the reverse bias. Let's talk about the reverse bias. Listen to me very carefully. In case of forward bias, we observe that current flows very easily. Okay. Diode behaves like a simple wire. Diode behaves like a simple wire. But, 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 when it comes to the reverse bias, my dear friends, my dear friends, my dear friends, listen to me very carefully. We say, we say, sir, in case of a reverse bias, let's take a PN junction diode over here. So we say this is the P type semiconductor, this is the N type semiconductor. And in this particular case, let's connect a battery to it. Let's connect a battery to it. Let's connect a battery to it. Okay. This is the battery we are connecting over here. This is the battery we are connecting over here. This is the battery we are connecting over here, okay? And this is, we say, sir, P-type semiconductor. This is N-side. And in case of P-side, we have these holes as majority charge carriers. In case of N-side, we have these electrons as majority charge carriers. These are the electrons. Now, listen to me very carefully. This is the depletion region. And this is basically, we say, the fixed charge in the depletion region. But in this particular case, I want you guys to basically do one thing. That is nothing but, that is nothing but, we say over here, we say over here, you connect, you connect the higher potential, the positive terminal we say, you connect this positive terminal to N side and negative terminal to P side. So we say, we say in this case, we say when when positive terminal, when positive terminal is connected to N side and we say negative terminal is connected to P side. When positive terminal is connected to N side and negative terminal is connected to P side, the diode is said to be reverse biased. The diode is said to be reverse biased. This is what we call the reverse bias, okay, of PN junction diode. This is what we call the reverse bias of PN junction diode. Now, my dear friends, listen to me very carefully. 
सर इन केस ऑफ पी एन जंक्शन डायोड एंड रिवर्स बायस वी से सर दिस पॉजिटिव टर्मिनल विल सेंड द पॉजिटिव चार्ज ओवर ह्योर नेगेटिव टर्मिनल विल सेंड द नेगेटिव चार्ज ओवर ह्योर वट डज दैट मीन सर दिस पॉजिटिव चार्ज विल अट्रैक्ट दीज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दिस नेगेटिव चार्ज विल अट्रैक्ट दीज होल्स बिकॉज होल्स हैव गॉट द नेगेटिव चार्ज टेल मी इन दिस केस विल द डिप्लीशन रीजन इंक्रीज और डिप्लीशन रीजन डिक्रीज Will the depletion region in this case increase or depletion region decrease? Here, yes. In this case, depletion region increases because this positive charge is attracting this n side. Negative charge is attracting the holes of p side. So we say in this case, depletion region will increase. And tell me, guys, in this case. If depletion region increases in this case, will the electron hole recombination take place? Will the electron hole recombination take place? We say electron hole recombination. Recombination, electron hole recombination does not take place. Does not take place. So in this particular case, we say electron hole recombination. does not take place at all okay because elect this depletion region has actually increased this depletion region has increased okay now if electron hole recombination does not take place tell me guys will there be current produced will there be current we say so no current is produced so that's why we say in case of reverse bias current is zero that's why we say in case of reverse bias current is zero okay now my dear friends i just want to tell you one single thing sir this is we say the internal electric field from positive charge to the negative charge from positive charge to the negative charge and when it comes to the external electric field external electric field is from this positive charge to this positive this negative charge this is the e external this is the external electric field because of the battery now now let me just make the graph over here let me just make the graph over here graph between current and voltage in a reverse bias in reverse bias graph between current and voltage in case of reverse bias listen to me very carefully let me just make the graph if i just tell you the graph will be something like this if i just tell you the graph will be something like this see my dear people this is we say sir current and this is we say sir voltage over here listen to me very carefully listen to me very carefully as as you keep on increasing the potential difference let's suppose i'll tell you over here listen to me very carefully sir because of this positive charge over here negative charge over here depletion region will increase no electron hole will hole will recombine no current is produced in this case okay now so the graph when we make the this is the graph in case of forward bias this is the forward bias forward bias and and on reversing the polarity reversing the polarity means positive terminal is from this side negative terminal is from this side this type i have shown you in case of photoelectric effect also so we say we say we say in this case in this case this is current and this is voltage in case of reverse bias we make the graph from this side and the graph of current will be something like this see the current is very small over here in case of reverse bias we say current is or current is zero or we say very 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 small guys guys what i'm trying to say is that what i'm trying to say is that we say listen to me very carefully in case of reverse bias current is very small or current is very current is zero now now on increasing the potential difference let's suppose you applied let's suppose you applied 5 volt potential difference current is zero 10 volt potential difference current is zero 15 volt potential difference current is zero now let's suppose you applied 40 volt potential difference means you have occupied a large positive charge over here you have occupied a large negative charge over here 
due to the strong electric field has developed over here. Tell me one thing. If electric field is strong, we say, we say, sir, this positive charge, this, this negative charge and positive charge, these are, we say, the, this is, these are, we say, the bonded electrons over here. These are, we say, the fixed, fixed charge over here. This is fixed charge over here. So we say, if you increase this external electric field, if you increase it so much that these bonds will actually break in the depletion region and current will start flowing. Guys, what I'm trying to say, you have got the negative charge over here. You have got the charge, positive charge over here. These are the bonds, okay? Now, if you increase this external electric field, and this is so huge that these bonds will break, this negative charge will flow in opposite direction, this positive charge will flow in this direction. So that's what I'm trying to say over here. That's what I'm trying to say over here on increasing the voltage, voltage slash external on increasing the voltage slash external electric field, we say at certain value, at certain value, we say bonds in depletion region will break, will break in large amounts, in large amounts. Bonds in depletion region will break in large amounts and current increases. What's up? <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Can you all hear me? Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. What's up? Guys. What's up, guys? What's up? How are you all doing? We have someone over here. What's up? What's up, people? How are you? How are you? <laughs> Where is the Josh? Boss in Kashmir. Yes, yeah. the boss is back to Kashmir. He was in Bangalore, actually. I hope you guys have watched that short. Huh? Yes. I'm becoming short. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Cat fight. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, nice. Good going, guys. Good going. So today so, it's day 52. Is it day 51 or day 52? Tomorrow it's your lecture. Huh? Yes, tomorrow it's going to be me. Oh, it's day 52. So day 53 is mine basically. Yeah. So tomorrow I'll see you all live. Okay. At 5 p.m. It's ionic equilibrium. But please make sure that you uh, go through chemical equilibrium once before joining the session. Yeah. Tomorrow it's ionic equilibrium, but make sure please and please you go through the chemical equilibrium once. No technical glitch this time because I am back at my studio, <laughs> right? I am back at my studio. Relax, you need not to worry. Yeah, cool. We'll be taking the session tomorrow for sure. Huh? Uh, the session duration will be five to six hours because it's a small chapter. It's not that big. Sir, I am just I just now reached home basically. I just now reached home. <laughs> Wait, I need to block certain people here. Remove, remove. Exactly. Hello, mm. you guys. Carry on then. I'll see you tomorrow. Huh? Have fun. Have fun. Have fun, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Have fun. I will will pagash class points, which definitely. Chalo, okay. Take care. So we say over here, on increasing the voltage external electric field, at certain value, bonds in depletion region will break in large amounts and current increases. Increases immediately. 
दैट वैल्यू दैट वैल्यू ऑफ दैट वैल्यू ऑफ पोटेंशियल पोटेंशियल इज कॉल्ड इज कॉल्ड वी से ब्रेक डाउन वोल्टेज ब्रेक डाउन वोल्टेज सो सो द ग्राफ वुड बी समथिंग लाइक दिस द ग्राफ वुड बी समथिंग लाइक दिस In case of reverse bias, let's suppose you apply 10 volts potential difference, sir. 20 volts potential difference, 30 volts potential difference. Okay, and at 40 volts potential difference, you you observe that current has increased a lot. This is the graph of current. Okay, the current has increased a lot, and this value is what we call the breakdown voltage. Break down voltage. Okay. so we say drag at breakdown voltage current is very large at breakdown voltage we say sir current is very large okay current has increased a lot so my dear friends in this particular case listen to me very carefully listen to me very carefully if you have got the p side n side and this is depletion region and you applied and you applied in this case and you applied in this case the external electric field okay now on increasing the external electric field we say these bonds in the depletion region will break and current starts flowing but but remember one thing when it comes to this current and this current remember always this current in the reverse bias is much much smaller than the current in the forward bias okay this current is in in the reverse bias is much much smaller than the current in forward bias and we say current in the reverse bias is we say we consider it zero so at breakdown voltage we get the value of current we get some current but compared to the forward current it is very small it is very small so we say we say so in reverse bias reverse bias we say diode behaves like diode behaves diode behaves like an open wire diode behaves like an open wire so in case of reverse bias we say diode behaves like an open wire okay so let me just tell you over here sir let's suppose we have got the diode over here this is the diode we have got and we are connecting a battery to this one okay always remember this is p side and this is n side so in this case the positive terminal is connected to the p side so we say this is nothing but forward bias forward bias and if we have the diode over here this is the diode okay and you have got the battery connected something like this okay this is the positive terminal connected to n side so this is what we call reverse bias this is what we call reverse bias this is the forward bias and this is what we call the reverse bias over here diode behaves like a simple wire current can flow easily in large amounts over here also current can flow over here also we say diode behaves like an open wire current is almost zero but at breakdown voltage current will flow but but that current will be small compared to the forward current tell me in the chats if forward bias and reverse bias is crystal and clear everybody out there is forward bias and reverse bias crystal and clear everybody in the chats i need to know i need to know is this crystal and clear is this crystal and clear is this crystal and clear all the people guys give me the signal please because i'll i'll have to move bit faster right now now there's certain reason in an unbiased pn junction diode holes diffuse from p region to n region in an unbiased pn junction diode holes diffuse from p region to n uh, sorry p region to n region see let's come on to the pn junction diode without any biasing so we say in just normal pn junction diode electrons shift from n side to p side holes shift from p to n means this is correct assertion in this case is correct so we say assertion in this case is correct hole concentration in p region is more as compared to the n region yes we say in case of p type semiconductor holes are large in number and 
we say we say electrons are less in number so reason is also correct so assertion and reason both are correct and reason is the correct explanation of assertion option a this is already we did this tell me in this one this was the question which was asked in need 2020 this was the uh, question which was asked in need 2020 tell me the increase in the width of depletion region in pn junction diode is due to increase in depletion region is due to option a both forward and reverse bias option b increase in forward current option c forward bias only option d reverse bias only which one which one which one increase in the depletion region happens in forward bias or reverse bias sir increase in the depletion region happens in the reverse bias only recently we studied this that's why i was telling you the theoretical points over here okay that's why i was telling you the theoretical points over here from the uh, in case of when it comes to the need okay because tons and tons of questions have been asked directly from the theory Okay, now can you tell me, consider a diode junction, uh, consider the junction diode as ideal, the value of current through AB is, you have to tell me the value of current in this case. Okay, so this is 4 volts potential over here, this is 6 volts, minus 6 over here. You have to tell me the current in this case. We say sir, as, as, when it comes to current, we say sir, current is V divided by R. Okay, we say sir, current is V divided by R okay now you tell me one thing what is this v this v is actually delta v divided by r v is actually delta v that is potential difference if you have to see how much is the current over here you will simply say i is equal to delta v delta v is what final potential minus uh, sorry higher potential minus lower potential higher is we say sir 4 plus 4 then minus lower potential is minus 6 so we say minus 6 4 minus of minus 6 divided by resistance resistance of this diode is 1 kilo ohm so we say that is 10 raised power 3 ohms over here now my dear friends this will be i is equal to 4 plus 6 as we say sir 10 divided by 10 raised power 3 and if you take this in the numerator this is 10 into 10 raised power minus 3 so it will be 10 raised power minus 2 ampere is that clear is that crystal and clear to each and everyone is that clear guys tell me in the chats tell me in the chats everybody okay option d now we have got the next question over here this was the question which was asked in mains 2021 this was the question which was asked in mains 2021 everybody out there tell me in the chats guys which is the correct option over here in the following figure the diode the diodes which are forward biased are which of the four diodes are forward biased is this visible to everyone is this visible to everyone i just need to know this is plus 10 volts 5 volts minus 10 0 is this visible is this visible tell me in the chats fast fast guys is this visible we say in this case, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. Sir, when it comes to the diode, I have told you, sir, if we make a diode something like this, this means P side and this means N side. Listen to me very carefully. We say, we say, sir, this is, we say over here, this is N side and this is P side of the diode. Now, my dear people, this P side is connected to, we say, sir, plus 10 volts. And this N side is connected to plus 5 volts. Which one is greater? Plus 10 is greater or plus 5 is greater? We say, sir, plus 10 is more than plus 5. So, means, my dear friends, means, my dear friends, this is higher potential, this is higher side, and this is, we say, sir, lower side. Now, if P side, this one is back side of the diode, if P is connected to higher potential, n is connected to lower potential means when p side is connected to positive terminal n side is connected to negative terminal in that case we say sir diode is we say forward biased 
सो दिस इज द केस ऑफ फॉरवर्ड बायस्ट ओके ऑप्शन ए इज फॉरवर्ड बायस्ट ना टेल मी ओवर श्योर सर दिस इज द ग्राउंडेड ओवर श्योर मीन जीरो वोल्ट एंड दिस इज पी साइड एंड दिस इज एन साइड नाउ माई डियर फ्रेंड्स टेल मी इन दिस केस सर पी साइड इज कनेक्टेड टू माइनस टेन वोल्ट एन साइड इज कनेक्टेड टू जीरो वोल्ट सो दिस इज हायर साइड एंड दिस इज सर लोअर साइड सो वी से हाई इज कनेक्टेड टू एन सो दिस इज नथिंग बट रिवर्स बायस इन दिस केस दिस इज रिवर्स बायस कम ओवर श्योर सर दिस इज माइनस ट्वेल्व एंड दिस इज माइनस फाइव इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर केस यू से सर दिस इज एन साइड एंड दिस इज पी साइड P side is connected to minus five. This is connected to minus twelve. So we say this is in this case high, okay, and this is in this case we say sir low. Now tell me in this particular case, guys. Tell me in this particular case, guys. Okay. So we say P side is connected to higher side. Pause. P side is connected to positive terminal, kind of. N side is connected to lower side. So this is also forward bias. Okay. and what about this one this is sir zero volts and this is p side and this is n side n side is connected to plus 5 p side is connected to zero and this is also reverse bias so answer is c and a so a is in option a it is forward biased in option c it is forward biased is this clear is this clear is this clear option c and a tell me in the chats guys is this clear to each and every one now let's move on to the next question this was the question which was asked in neet 2017 i need to know how many of you people can exactly solve this how many of you people can exactly solve this which of the following represents the forward bias which of the following is rep represents the forward bias okay which of the following represents the forward bias everybody out here out there <clears throat> tell me sir this is the p side and this is n side if the diode is something like this this means p side and this means n side now in this case this is 3 volts this is 5 volts this is high and this is a low sir high side is connected to n low side is connected to p so we say this is nothing but in this case this is reverse bias because n side is connected to high p side is connected to low now come over here this is zero means this is high and minus 2 this is low and this is p side and this is n side n side is connected to low p side is connected to high and this is we say sir forward bias come over here this is minus 3 this is minus 4 and this is p and this is n this is we say sir high and this is we say sir low sir this minus 3 is connected to n side p side is connected to low this is also reverse bias in this case reverse bias in this case come over here this is plus 2 this is this this is high and this is over here low this is minus 2 this is p side and this is n side n side is connected to higher potential p side is connected to lower potential so we say this is also the reverse bias in this case so we are supposed to say which of the following represents the forward bias so in this case the option b is the correct option yes so many people have actually given the correct answer over here j 2004 can you solve this particular question is this visible is this visible is this visible it is minus 12 over here minus 5 over here is this visible tell me in the chats is this visible guys let me know in the live chat everybody out there like the session if you have not liked make it make it 400 guys make it 400 okay this is not visible let me show it something like this let me make it okay this is minus 5 volt it will take time in making guys so what i'll just do is that i'll give you this homework homework now you will say sir how can we see this question 
I'll share the PDF once we are done with the session. Afterwards, we'll do this at your home. Okay? We'll do this at your home. I don't think it is zooming over here. No. Okay, this is the homework I'll give you later on. Okay, this question. Need 2016. Need 2016. Can you solve this particular question over here? So you are supposed to tell me how much is the current flowing through resistance R1 or how much is the current flowing through the battery. In this case, you are supposed to tell me the current. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. In this particular question, yes, I'll be sharing the PDF. In this particular question, what you are supposed to do is you have to check which diode is forward biased and which diode is reverse biased. Which diode is forward biased and which diode is reverse biased? See, listen to me very carefully. If I say, sir, current will leave. If I say, if I say current will leave from this battery something like this. And this current flows something like this. Now, some part of the current will enter this diode and some part of the current will enter this diode. Now, can you guys tell me, sir, this positive terminal is directly connected to this inside over here, okay? And we can say, sir, this one, this diode over here is, we say, sir, reverse biased. And in case of reverse bias, we say, sir, no current flows. So, this one is, we say, sir, over here, that is forward biased. Why? Because, see, if the current is entering from the front side, you can understand it something like this. Current will come over here. Can the current flow through the diode from front side? No. So current cannot flow through this diode. So remove this one. Will the current flow through this diode? Yes. Current can enter from P side. Current can flow from back side. Because this is in the forward bias. This is in the reverse bias. So in this case, if we redraw the circuit. 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 So we can make it something like this. This is the resistance over here. And this branch, this diode is reverse biased, so remove it. So then you have got this diode. This diode has got how much resistance? We say, sir, this is 2 ohms. We say, sir, this is also 2 ohms. And then we say we can make it something like this. So this will be, we say, sir, 10 volts. Now in this case, you have to find the current. We say, sir, current will be I is equal to V divided by R. Now V is how much? That is 10. R is how much? R is 2 plus 2 is 4 ohms. So 10 by 4, that is 2.5 ampere. Is this clear to each and every one? Guys, current cannot flow through this diode. This behaves as an open wire. So remove it. Then redraw the circuit. Make this resistance, this resistance over here. And you can say current is 2.5 ampere. Let's move on to the next one. Two ideal diodes are connected to a battery as shown in the figure. Okay. This is the diode 1. This is the diode 2. Tell me in this case, which diode over here is forward biased and which one is reverse biased? Which one is forward biased and which one is reverse biased? In the chats, everybody, everybody. Which one is forward biased over here and which one is reverse bias? Guys, am I going fast? Why are you not answering in the chats? Am I going fast or I am going slow? Tell me in the chats everybody, everybody. We say in this case, D2 is reverse bias. Okay, already discussed. D2 is reverse biased, okay? And D1 is, we say, sir, forward biased. How can you say it, sir? See, positive terminal of the battery. Positive terminal of the battery. See, this is the positive terminal of the battery. It is connected to N side over here. And in this case, it is connected to P side. Means this one is, this one is reverse bias and this one is forward bias. 
okay this one is reverse bias and this one is forward bias now my dear people so if we redraw this particular circuit so we can make it something like this this upper circuit this will behave as open wire and this is 5 volts over here and then you can say this is 10 ohms so in this case you can say current is v divided by r and what is the value of current over here v is how much that is 5 divided by we say sir 10 ampere okay that is 1 by 2 ampere or 0 0.5 ampere is that clear 0 0.5 ampere okay tell me the answer of this question find current flowing through the battery find current flowing through the battery okay find the current flowing through the battery in this case see guys how much is the potential difference of the battery how much is the voltage we say sir 5 volts now this 5 volts in this 5 volts we say sir 0 0.7 volts this diode will take 0 0.7 volts because in series combination i have told you potential is divided if in 5 volts 0 0.7 will take d1 will take 0 0.7 volts so we say potential difference across this will be 0 0.3 volts how much will be the potential difference across this we say sir 0 0.7 plus 0 0.3 is 1 how much is remaining in 5 5 minus 1 that is 4 so 4 volts will be across this now tell me the current in this one so you say sir current i'll just write over here current in the resistor so we say sir i is equal to v divided by r now in this case when it comes to v you say sir v is 5 r is how much in this case that is 10 5 divided by 10 <coughs> sorry 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 it is not 5 because across this it is 4, 4 divided by 10, V by R. Yes, 0 0.4. Is that clear? Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay, next one we have over here. I want you guys to tell me in this particular case how much is the current. How much is the current over here? You have got the diode this one. You have got the diode this one. We say this diode is forward biased and this diode is a reverse bias. Why sir? Because in this particular case, you can see this is the N side, this is the P side. N side is connected to higher positive terminal and P side is connected to we say negative terminal. So we say this is forward biased, sorry reverse biased. So no current will flow through this particular diode. If no current will flow through this diode, we say current will only flow through the diode 1. So we say here, current flows through, we say D1 only. We say current flows through the D1 diode only in this case. Now, my dear people, if 5 volt is the potential difference by battery, how much is the potential difference across this? You say sir 0 0.3 volt. Now if 0 0.3 this is taking in 5, how much is remaining? We say sir 4.7 that will be given to, we say sir this only. That will be given to, given to this only. So we say in this case current is equal to V divided by R. What is the value of current in this case? V. V is how much? That is 4.7 divided by resistance in this case is we say sir 10. This will be the current in this case. Is this crystalline clear? Is this crystalline clear? Everybody over there 0 0.47 yes. Is this crystalline clear guys? Okay. So whenever you see the diode is in reverse bias, then we say no current will flow through that particular diode. As simple as that. That will behave as open wire. Now let's come over here. Can you tell me the current in this case? This is an important question. 
Tell me. See, in this case, this diode has got 0.5 volts. This diode has got 0.3 volts. You have to tell me how much is the current in the resistance or how much is the current in the battery. Tell me. Tell me in this case. Tell me. This is your homework. I'll give you this as homework. And let me know the answer in the comments. Answer in the comments. Let me know the answer of this question in the comments later on. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on to this one that is half wave rectifier. Let's talk about the half wave rectifier. We'll take the break at. You'll take. We'll take the break at. Once we finish this half wave, full wave, and Zener diode. Afterwards, we'll take the break. Okay. Now listen to me very carefully. Sir, what does half wave rectifier mean? I'll just write over here. We say it is a device. It is a device used to. It is a device used to convert. Convert AC into DC. It is a device which is used to convert AC into DC. When it comes to the AC, we say AC is bidirectional current. Bidirectional current. And when it comes to DC, we say it is unidirectional current. Unidirectional current. Okay. AC, alternating current flows in two directions. And we say direct current flows in one direction only that is unidirectional current okay this we have already discussed what is the difference between ac and dc okay now my dear friends listen to me very carefully let me recall this let's suppose we have got we have got the ac source over here ac source means which provides the ac current and in this case you have used the resistance over here we say in this case current can flow in this direction also current can flow in this direction also it it gives one cycle in this direction another cycle in this direction this is the ac current but when it comes to the direct current let's suppose we have got the resistance over here okay we say over here sir current will leave from the positive terminal and it will enter the negative terminal so current only has one direction over here that is from positive terminal to the negative terminal Positive terminal to the negative terminal. Over here, the current can flow something like this. The current can flow something like this. Now, now, listen to me very carefully over here. If I say, if I say, sir, the graph of this bidirectional current, the graph of this bidirectional current is this. This current can be positive, means it can flow something like this. This current can be negative also, it can flow something like this. But when it comes to this one, the graph of this can be something like this. You can say this one also. You can say this one also. All of these are basically positive currents only. Positive currents only. Current can flow in one direction only, unidirection only. This is bidirectional current. Now what is this half wave rectifier? This half wave rectifier is a device which converts bidirectional current into unidirectional current let me show you how does it exactly do it let me just show you let's suppose we have got over here we have to make this half wave rectifier we have got so this is basically i am using over here a transformer this is a transformer okay and i am basically i am basically connecting a diode to it there is we have a diode this is a diode which actually we have 
and then we have the load resistance over here this is the rl this is the diode this is the transformer okay and this is the ac supply that you are sending over here this is ac supply this is the ac supply that you are sending this is ac my dear friends this is what we call the half wave rectifier this is what we call the half wave rectifier in this case in order to create half wave rectifier we take a diode we take a transformer transformer we make it something like this and we take a load resistance sir why do we use the transformer in case of half wave rectifier because because when it comes to the half wave rectifier see we know transformer is used in order to We know transformer is used in order to step up the voltage and transformer is used in order to step down the voltage. Let's suppose you have the instrument, let's suppose you have the refrigerator at your home. You use the transformer over there, why? Because if the supply coming from the outside is large, that will decrease that supply, that will step down the supply. If the supply coming from the outside is less, it will increase the supply. Okay, now my dear friends, so we use the transformer over here. If the supply coming from the outside is large or small, so it will basically stabilize that. Okay, now, now, my dear friends, we say, we say, listen to me very carefully. This AC current is bidirectional current. So when this current is sent to, when this current is sent to this particular half wave rectifier, we say, it flows in two directions sir this will be its one direction and this will be its another direction in this direction in this direction because alternating current is has two directions it is positive it is negative let's suppose this is the positive cycle and this is the negative cycle my dear friends we say we say when this positive cycle enters the diode we say this diode will allow this positive cycle this is let's suppose positive cycle and this is negative cycle. So we say here, here diode will, will allow the, we say positive cycle, diode will allow the positive cycle and, and will not allow the negative cycle. So diode will not allow the negative cycle in this particular case. Why? Because this current will enter from the front side of the diode. So, so if we just, if we then make the graph of output, see, so the output will be, so if we then make the graph of the output current, we say, sir, only positive cycle is allowed negative cycle is not allowed so we say sir the graph will be something like this graph will be something like this sir negative cycle is not allowed sorry so negative cycle is not allowed so the graph output will be something like this okay so we say when let's suppose one cycle is entering this half wave rectifier positive cycle is allowed positive cycle flows through this diode flows through this loop in this loop we so that is the positive cycle but a negative cycle i am not mentioning over here negative cycle is zero at that point we say sir this is not allowed over here then again when next cycle comes positive one is again allowed and negative one is not allowed again we say sir current remains off for some time again this tell me is this current is this current unidirectional or bidirectional is this current unidirectional or bidirectional? In this case, we say, sir, current is positive only. And tell me, is this current good or bad? The supply, the output, output is fluctuating. Output is fluctuating over here. Means current, let's suppose you are using the bulb at your room, in your room. So the current is basically coming, okay? Bulb glows for some time, bulb glows for some time, then current goes, okay? Bulb remains off. Again, current comes, again, current goes. Again, brightness is there, no brightness, brightness, no brightness. That's why we say this is the fluctuating output. 
fluctuating output. Is this clear? Tell me in the chats, is this clear? This is how we convert. Okay. And is not good. This is how we convert. This is how we convert the AC into DC. AC into DC. Now comes basically the full wave rectifier. Now comes basically the full wave rectifier. Sir, why it will not allow the negative cycle? That's what I was explaining till now. Negative cycle because this diode will not allow the negative cycle. Current cannot flow from the front side of the diode. This is what I explained in the reverse bias also. And this is what I explained in the first slide of the semiconductors also. Is that clear guys? Is this clear? Is this clear? Okay. Let's come on to the full wave rectifier. Since the output we are getting in the half wave rectifier is not good at all. So what we do is that we basically use full wave rectifier. Let me just show you over here if I make the full wave rectifier in this case. So we take a transformer over here and if somebody asks you why do we use the transformer over here in order to stabilize the output in order to stabilize the input supply. If the input coming from the outside is large it will decrease that input supply will step down that now so we say we'll use over here this one and we have got this one okay Tell me, is this, is this a full wave rectifier? Tell me, is this a full wave rectifier in the chats, everybody? Is this a full wave rectifier? Is this a full wave rectifier? Yes or no in the chats? We say, sir, no, this is not a full wave rectifier at all. We say this is not a full wave rectifier at all. Now, let me show you how do we exactly make the full wave rectifier. So we say. This is the load resistance and this is how do we exactly make the full wave rectifier. Okay, so this is the load resistance over here. This is how do we make the full wave rectifier. Listen to me very carefully. So we say full wave rectifier is that rectifier which allows, we say it allows, allows both the cycles positive as well as negative it allows both the cycles positive as well as negative okay now now in this particular case in this particular case we say sir this is the input supply this is ac over here okay now my dear friends Half wave rectifier, if you take a look at the half wave rectifier over here, if you take a look at the half wave rectifier over here, we say the output of half wave rectifier it is, it is allowing the positive cycle only, negative cycle it is not allowing. 
when the negative cycle was flowing through this half wave rectifier, the current was zero. You can see no current is over there. But let me just show you when it comes to the full wave rectifier. See, you have got the diode one over here, diode two over here. And then you apply the load resistance, something like this. This is what we call the full wave rectifier. We say this is the positive cycle of the current. We say this is the positive cycle of the current. And this is, we say, negative cycle of the current. We say, sir, when positive cycle flows, let's suppose this is current, which is positive cycle. And this is the negative cycle of the current, which flows from the lower side. Okay. My dear friends, this positive cycle can flow through this diode D1. Okay. Over here. Now, when this current wants to basically come from over here, listen to me very carefully. I'll make you understand. This positive cycle, if we say, if we say, this positive cycle will flow something like this, this, this. Now, this current, this positive cycle wants to now flow something like this. But this diode will not allow this positive cycle to flow through this. Why? Because diode does not allow the current to flow from the front side. The current cannot enter the diode from the front side. So what will it do? So this current will exactly flow through this diode and then it will go through the resistor. When it will go through the resistor and then in this particular loop and then it will reach over here. Remember my dear friends, current always flow in the loop. Current always flow in the loop. We say sir, this is basically the path of I positive cycle. This is basically the path of positive cycle. Current always flows in the loop. Now, my dear friends, when it comes to the negative cycle, we say, sir, this negative cycle will flow something like this, 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 this. Now, it wants to go in the upper diode, but this diode will not allow this current to flow in the loop. Why? Because this negative cycle cannot enter from the front side of the diode. So, this negative cycle will flow something like this through the, in this particular loop, in this particular loop. So, we say, we say here, Positive cycle is allowed, negative cycle is also allowed. Both the cycles are basically allowed over here. Is that clear my dear friends? Is that clear my dear friends in this particular case? We say positive cycle is allowed, negative cycle is in this case allowed. Positive cycle is allowed. We say negative cycle in this case is allowed. Okay. Is this clear guys? Is this clear guys? Okay, so we say here, 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 positive as well as negative cycle flows in the loop, flows in the loop, okay, positive, the path of the positive, this positive cycle is this one and the path of this negative cycle is basically this one. And if we talk about its output, if we just talk about its output, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully or I'll, or I'll show you on the next slide. If we say, sir, this is, let's suppose we'll make the input first and then we'll make the output first. So this is, let's suppose input and this is, we say, sir, output. Tell me one thing. Sir, when it comes to the input, we are giving this as input over here. Sir, when it comes to the output, what is the output in this case? We say, sir, this is the positive cycle. Okay, this is negative cycle. This is AC. But output in this case will be DC only. So we say positive cycle is allowed in this case. And when negative cycle flows, let's suppose first the positive cycle will flow in this one. Easily it passes and it gives the output over here. And when it comes to the negative cycle, sir, the negative cycle also flows something like this only. So this is basically, this negative cycle also flows in the same direction. So this will be the graph of negative cycle. So positive also became negative. Then if we say, sir, next cycle, if we say, sir, next cycle, we say, sir, this positive cycle again flows something like this. And this negative cycle also becomes the positive something like this. So we say this is in this case, we say, sir, this is the output in case of, in case of, this is the output in case of full wave rectifier. 
This is the output in case of full wave rectifier. Negative cycle is also converted to the positive cycle. Tell me in the chats, is this crystal clear to each and everyone? For J means go with the previous year questions, okay? Is this clear to each and everyone? Guys, I want everyone to give me the signal over here. Is this clear? Is this clear? How do we get this output in this case? When positive cycle is passed through this load, it flows in this direction. Negative cycle also flows in this direction. So that's why I made both of the cycles from the upper side. Tell me in this case, is this output a good output or a bad output? Is this output a good output or a bad output? Tell me, is this output a good output or a bad output? We say this output is also bad output. What does bad output mean? Fluctuating. What does that mean? No, this is not good output at all. Let me just tell you why. See, the value of current initially is zero. Then it is increasing, 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 becoming maximum. You are using the bulb at your home. So you are giving the supply. It is increasing, increasing, increasing. So bulb is giving you small brightness initially. Then increasing, increasing the brightness, increasing the brightness. Again, then it starts decreasing, 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 decreasing. So the brightness of the bulb is decreasing, 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 decreasing. Decreasing. And it becomes zero. It becomes zero. Okay. So the current is gone. Now, immediately, again, current starts increasing. Again, brightness comes, 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 becomes maximum. Again, it goes, 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 becomes zero. Again, it becomes maximum zero, maximum zero, maximum zero. But what happens in the previous case is, what happens in the previous case is, over here, the current came, okay? Then it became maximum, 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 okay? Then it starts again decreasing, 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 and gone. Now, for a period of time, for a particular period of time, current is, there is no current, zero, zero. Then once again, the current becomes maximum and zero, then current goes for some time. But in this particular case, current is zero, maximum getting zero. When it becomes zero, instantly, then again, it starts increasing. This is the difference between the two outputs. But this is also not the good output, very annoying, yes. Now, we want the output should be something like this, constant. If you are using the bulb at your home, it should give you the brightness which should be constant. So how to make the output something like this? So we say, we say, we say, I'll just write over here. So get the constant DC out, DC voltage, DC output. We use capacitive filter, capacitive filter. So we use capacitive filter. What does capacitive filter actually mean? I'll make you understand what does capacitive filter actually mean. See, so we'll be using a capacitor over here. This is what we call the capacitive filter. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. I'll make you understand. My dear people, my dear people, we say when positive cycle of the current flows through the battery, okay? So the input is something like this. The input is something like this. So when positive cycle of the, when positive cycle flows through this one, so it is initially zero and it becomes maximum. It becomes maximum. Now listen to me very carefully. Now, when this positive cycle wants to decrease, when the positive cycle wants to decrease, listen to me. So we say at the time of zero to maximum, when the current was increasing, we say, sir, this current was flowing and getting maximum. At that point only, it charged the capacitor also. In capacitor, we charge the, we charge it, okay? See, in capacitor, we say, we say, in capacitor, we store the energy. My dear friends, my dear friends, we say in this case, when positive cycle was getting zero to maximum, 
at that point only the capacitor was getting charged also so what i what i'm just trying to say in this case is what i'm just trying to say in this case is as as when when positive cycle cycle was increasing increasing at that time or you write in that time in that time we say capacitor capacitor got charged okay capacitor got charged now when this positive cycle wants to decrease so this capacitor is now charged this capacitor does not want this current to decrease this capacitor does not want this positive cycle to decrease so what will it do instead what will it do instead it will it will basically it will basically see this is this is this this is the output that we were getting without the capacitive filter this is the output that we were getting without the capacitive filter after using the capacitive filter we say when this cycle wants to decrease so initially it was becoming maximum when this cycle wants to decrease capacitor will send the energy because capacitor is charged so then it will maintain the constant voltage similarly similarly once again when the next cycle wants to increase when the next cycle will increase so at that point of time again capacitor will become charged again capacitor will become charged okay again capacitor will become charged again capacitor will become charged okay again when this cycle wants to decrease again this capacitor will send the energy and this will be the output in that case this is the output this is the output using capacitive capacitive filter okay so what i'm trying to say in this particular case is when positive cycle flows through this one it will charge the capacitor now when this positive cycle will decrease at that point of time capacitor will send the energy and maintains the constant voltage and when negative cycle flows through this again it will charge the capacitor and when negative cycle wants to decrease this capacitor will again send the energy and make the voltage as constant okay so i'll just write the same statement over here when the when it when it starts decreasing when it starts decreasing the capacitor the capacitor will maintain maintain the constant output constant output by sending the energy is that clear is that clear guys is that clear guys i hope this is clear i hope this is clear so we say over here we say over here without the capacitor output will be output will be this one output will be this one this is without the capacitor so on using the capacitor <coughs> capacitor will not let this cycle to go zero but it will maintain the output over here is this clear or super clear from i, I just need to know from everyone is this clear or super clear <coughs> is this clear or super clear i just need to know in the chats everybody everybody i'm waiting for your answers only I need to know guys if this is clear to each and everyone I'm waiting wait 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 we'll finish we just have some topics okay
Is this clear? I just need yes, Xena diode, and then we have photo diode is a small topic that will take just two minutes. Xena diode and its questions will take 10, 10 to 15 minutes. 20 minutes more, and we'll I'll give you the break. Now see, my dear people, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. Over here. What is a Xena diode? We say, sir, <clears throat> we say it is used as a voltage <clears throat> regulator. Or we say voltage stabilizer or it maintains the constant voltage. It maintains the constant voltage. It is like transformer. It is like transformer. It maintains the constant voltage. It is like transformer. See, let's suppose you have got this refrigerator at your home. Or you have got the television at your home. Let's suppose this is a TV. This is the supply which comes from the, from the outside. Okay, this is the supply. So you basically use a small transformer over here. And this supply, input supply goes into the transformer. And then it is given to the television. Okay, why? Why? Because, because the reason over here is, if the supply coming from the outside is large, this will step down that supply so that it will send the constant supply to this particular television. It will not, if you send the large supply, okay, the voltage is very large. This is all, this will burn out, okay. So if the voltage is small, this will not work. So in order to maintain the constant voltage, we use the transformer. Same is the case of Zener diode. Zener diode is also used as voltage stabilizer. Or we say it maintains the constant voltage like the transformer. Like the transformer. Now listen to me very carefully. Now listen to me very carefully. We say, we say in this particular case, it maintains the constant voltage. It maintains the constant voltage. Listen to me very carefully, my dear people. We say, we say, when it comes to this one, we say in... When it, let, let me basically show you the symbol. When it comes to the symbol of the Zener diode, the symbol is something like this. This is the symbol of Zener diode. And in market, you'll get to see different types of Zener diodes. Means, means, let's suppose, if we say, if we say, we have got a Zener diode over here. This Zener diode is having the VZ voltage. That is, let's suppose, 20 volts. What does it mean? You'll go to the market. There are different types of Zener diodes available. This is having 20 volts voltage. And we say, sir, this is the Zener diode, which is having, let's suppose, 30 volts voltage. That means if you use this Zener diode somewhere, it will maintain the 20 volts voltage. If you use this Zener diode, it will maintain the 30 volts voltage. Okay, different Zener diodes can maintain different voltages. And one more point I just want to add over here. We say it, it works in reverse, reverse bias condition. It works in reverse bias condition. What does that mean? Sir, if the Zener diode works in reverse bias condition, means, can you tell me the graph in case of reverse bias? So the graph of current in case of reverse bias was something like this. Okay. So at certain voltage, at certain voltage, let's suppose V is equal to 20 volts. We used to get the large current. And this was basically the breakdown voltage. Breakdown voltage. So that's what is given over here. We say, sir, at Vz is equal to 20 volts. What is this Vz? If I say this is the Zener diode, 
This Zener diode has V Z is equal to 20 volts. It is the breakdown voltage of 20 volts. Means if you give 20 volts to the Zener diode, sir, the current can flow in the diode in large amounts. And if you give less than 20 volts to the diode, we say, sir, current in that case will be zero. Zener diode remains off. What I'm trying to say, don't get confused over here. This is a confusing topic. So listen to me very carefully. If I say I have got a Zener diode over here. Zener diode has got potential difference voltage 20 volts. What does it mean? It means that it is a breakdown voltage of Zener diode. Means if you give 20 volt potential difference to the Zener diode, then only current will flow through the Zener diode. Second, its meaning is if its voltage is 20 volts, it means that it can maintain the constant voltage across any load, across any load. Okay, and this is Zener diode. If we say if we give 30 volts to this Zener diode, current can flow in this one, this gets on. So we say, we say, if, 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 we say, sir, we say, sir, V supplied is less than this Vz. If you give supplied voltage less than the Zener voltage, then diode remains off, remains off. No current flows in that diode. Now, once again, I just want you guys to understand. Let's suppose we have got the battery over here. Okay, this is the 100 volt battery. You have got, let's suppose, resistance over here. And now, you have got one more resistance over here. Listen to me very carefully over here. And this resistance is, let's suppose this is a television. This is a load resistance or this is a television. Television also has the resistance. I want you guys to basically maintain the constant potential difference across this television. Let's suppose we have to maintain, let's suppose 20 volts potential difference across this. Why? Because if you give greater than 20 volt potential difference, it will burn out. If you give less than 20 volts, it will not work. So we don't have to give greater than 20 volts. So what we can do in this case, we'll use a Zener diode over here. Okay. We'll use a Zener diode over here. Okay. We'll use a Zener diode over here. Okay. This Zener diode and this Zener diode should have the breakdown voltage of 20 volt only. But why? Because then only it can maintain across this 20 volts. See. This Zener diode and this television, they are in parallel. So potential difference across this Zener diode is equal to the potential difference across this television. So it will maintain 20 volts across the television. Now if I say over here, you have got, let's suppose you have got the same battery, okay? You have got the same battery over here and you have got this load resistance or this is a television over here and you have to maintain, you have to maintain 30 volt potential difference across this. So you will be using which Zener diode in this case? You will be using, we say, sir, 30 volt, 30 volt. You have to maintain 30 volt. So you will be using 30 volt Zener diode. Because breakdown of this Zener diode is 30 volts. Breakdown of this Zener diode is 30 volts. And breakdown of this Zener diode is, we say, sir, 20 volts. So it will maintain 20 volts. And if, if, if we say, Potential difference across this diode is less than 20 volts. We say diode remains off. This will not work. It will give all of its supply to this one. No problem. But if Vz is greater than 20 volts, it will maintain 20 only. It will maintain 20 only. Tell me in the chats if this is clear to each and every one. What is the work of Zener diode? I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. Tell me in the chats, guys, everybody out there, everybody out there. Okay, great, great, great. Now see, now see. 
means if you have if you have the television if you want to maintain the 30 volt potential difference across this use 30 volt potential you use 30 volt zener diode simply over here use 20 volt zener diode now now in this case i just want to add one thing over here we say sir we say sir as as one thing i just want to add over here we say sir if if voltage supplied is less than 20 volts then this remains off no current will flow through over here all the supply will be given to television no problem that supply will be less that will not burn the television but if the supply is greater than 20 volts then you say this will remain on and it will maintain the constant voltage now you tell me one thing sir potential difference across zener diode this is the output voltage this is the output voltage Output means that you get across the TV, television or load resistance is equal to, sir, V output is equal. To. You tell me one thing. Sir, sir, in this case, if I say this load resistance is RL and current in this is IL, you tell me one thing. This is voltage across Zener diode. This is output voltage. Sir, we know this voltage across Zener diode is constant. Okay. Even if you give more voltage across the inner diode, it will maintain 20 only. So we say, sir, this is nothing but I, V is equal to I into R. I into L, R into L. Because Vz is equal to V output. Potential difference across this is Vz. Across this, it is V out. Is equal to, sir, this is I L. Current in this is I L. Into load resistance, that is R L. Now you tell me one thing. Sir, this is constant. So we say, sir, this is constant. Means is equal to I L into R L. Sir, we know load resistance, resistance is also constant. So if this is constant, this is constant. So we say the value of load current is also constant. Means the current which enters this television is also constant. So what I want, forget about this. I don't want to remember this. There is only one concept that you have to remember in this one. There are different Zena diodes available in the market. If this Zena diode has got 20 volt, it means it can maintain 20 volt potential difference across any load. If this has got 30 volt, means it can maintain across, it can maintain 30 volt across any load. Okay. If potential difference is less than 20 volt, it remains off. If potential difference is greater than 20 volt, it will maintain 20 only. That's it. You have to remember this only. Now, let's come on to the questions. You have to tell me in this case, find the current in the Zener diode. See, this is the battery. Battery will, let's suppose, send the current I over here. And in that current I, we say, sir, some part of the current will enter the Zener diode. And some part of the current will actually enter this load resistance that is I L, I Z and this is I. In this, clearly we can say, sir, this current uh, I is equal to, we say, sir, I Z plus we can say, sir, I L. This current I is equal to I Z plus we can say I L. Now, my dear friends, my dear friends, in this case, in this case, when it comes to this current, listen to me very carefully. Sir, Vz is given as 15 volts, means potential difference across this Zener diode will be 15 volts maximum and it is constant. It is constant. Now, if across this it is 15 volts, can we say across this diode, across this load resistance, it will be also 15 volts? Yes, sir. 100%. So, this will be across this, it is also 15 volts. Because they are connected in parallel. Now 20 volt is the battery. Across this is 15 volts. How much will be across this? You say sir across this will be 5 volts. Now can you tell me current in this one sir? I in this case will be V divided by R. V is the potential difference across this that is 5 divided by. Resistance over here is that is 105 by 100. If you are getting any sort of confusion in this one. I want you guys to watch it. Once again, once we end the stream and watch it at 2x, you'll get to understand. So this is the current in this one that is 5 by 100. Now, my dear friends, can you tell me the current in this IL? The IL is V divided by RL. So potential difference across this is 15 volts. 15 divided by this load resistance is we say, sir, 100. 
सो दिस विल बी थ्री डिवाइडेड बाय हंड्रेड ओके थ्री बाय हंड्रेड नव नव इन दिस केस आई इज गिवन एज फाइव आई वी गॉट एज फाइव डिवाइड बाय हंड्रेड इज इक्वल आई जर्ड करंट इन दिस वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट दैट इज आई जर्ड आई जर्ड देन वी हैव then we have plus over here il what is the value of il that is 3 divided by 100 so we say in this case i z will be 5 divided by 100 minus we say 3 divided by 100 so i z in this case will be 5 minus 3 is 2 divided by 100 in this case so this is the answer this is the answer in this particular case is this clear is this crystal and clear to each and every one so we say this is the concept which i exactly used over here if but vz is given as 15 volts we say it will maintain the 15 volt potential difference across this so across this will be also 15 volts across this will be also 15 volts guys is this clear tell me in the chats everybody out there and like this session if you have not liked wait 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 let me solve this question Okay, this is the question which was this was asked in J mains. J mains, two thousand twenty. J mains two thousand twenty. J mains two thousand twenty. See, the circuit in this case is given something like this. Let me show you. okay so we have got the zener diode 1 okay and this is 6 volts what is 6 volts 6 volts is the breakdown voltage means it can maintain the 6 volts potential difference across any load now we have got one more diode over here we have got one more diode over here that is let's suppose 4 volts and in this case we have got the 100 ohm resistance connected across it this is the diode a this is the diode b and then we have got the load resistance load resistance means television refrigerator whatever it may be so this is rl and this is given as 400 ohms and then across this you have got the output this is the output voltage v out and you are giving the v input over here now in this case you have to plot the graph between output voltage and time see you are giving input input voltage what you will get as output you have to plot its graph okay this graph this graph this graph this graph in all the four options can you tell me the answer of this particular question can you tell me the answer of this particular question Can you tell me the answer of this particular question? See, see. Let me just tell you over here. Let me just tell you over here. Let's suppose if we say if we are giving V input is let's suppose the input voltage we are giving as one volt. Input voltage we are giving as one volt. Listen to me very carefully. I'll make you understand. Sir, this is the diode one in which you have got six volts of breakdown voltage. Means means that if voltage across this diode is less than six volts, this diode remains off. No current will flow through the diode because this is in the reverse bias condition. Now we say, sir, this diode has got four volts breakdown voltage. If 
potential difference across this diode is less than 4 volts. This also remains on. Now, my dear friends, if you are giving input as 1 volt, sir, all of the input will be given to this particular load resistance, okay? This is off, this is off. So, whole potential difference will be across this. So, output will be, sir, V output in that case will be, sir, 4 volts. Sorry, sorry, sorry. V output in that case will be 1 volt. Giving 1 output as 1. Now, make the graph, make the graph of output. Make the graph of output over here. Make the graph of output over here. Sir, this is V output. If you are giving 1 volt as input, you are getting 1 volt as output. Now, let's suppose we are giving V input as 2 volts. Sir, in this case, if potential difference is less than 6 volts, it remains off. So, it is off. This is also off. So, 2 volts you are giving, getting the output. So, output in this case will be 2 volts. So, we say the graph will be... The graph will be directly, it will go till 2 volts. This is 1 volt and 2 volts, okay? Now, if we say, if V input is, let's suppose, 3 volts, what will be the output voltage in that case? We say, sir, 3 volts on. So, we say, V output, output voltage in this case is, we say, sir, 3 volts. Output voltage in this case is 3 volts. If you are giving input as 3, output is 3. Why? Because this also remains off. Let me just tell you, my dear friends, if you are giving V input as 4 volts, now at 4 volts, we say, this, this, this diode gets on. This diode gets on. This diode gets on at 4 volts, okay? So we say, my dear friends, listen to me very carefully. If you are giving 4 volts, this diode gets on means across this diode will be now 4 volts. And if across this is 4 volts, so this is parallel to this one. Across this will be also 4 volts. So means output in this case will be also how much? We say sir 4 volts. So the graph will go straight till 4 volts. Till 4 volts. Okay. Now, now if I say in this case, if I say sir V input I am giving 5 volts. If I say I am giving the input voltage as 5 volts, this will still remain off. But in this case, sir, this maintains the 4 volt potential difference only. Because this is the 4 volt diode, Zena diode. So it will maintain 4 volt potential difference only. So now, across the diode will be 4 volt. Guys, 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 across this diode will be 4 volt only. Okay. But we are giving input as 5. So, across this will be 1 volt. So, 4 plus 1 is, we say, sir, 5. Rest of the potential difference will be given to this resistance over here. If, my dear friends, this resistance was not present over here, then across this br branch would have been 4 volts only. So, we say, my dear friends, if V input is 5 volts across this, this point and this point is also 4 plus 1 is 5. So, means... Output is also 5. So, it will go straight again till 5 volts. Now, my dear friends, if I just tell you, if I just tell you, V input I am giving 6 volts, what about the output? Sir, when you give the input as 6 volts, now this gets activated, okay? So, it will maintain the constant potential difference across this. Guys, now if across this is 6, how much will be across this? Across this will be also 6. Let me show you. Let me show you how. Let me show you how. See, across the diode, across the diode, it will maintain the 4 volt only. But where will the rest of the 2 go? Rest of the 2 will go across, across this, this 100, ohm 100 ohm resistance. So we say 4 plus 2 is 6. If input is 6, this is on. Across this is 6. Across this is 6. Across this will be also 6. So output will be also 6. We say sir, V output in this case is also 6 volts. So this will again go till 6 volts. So, so this will again go till 6 volts. My dear people, so this will be exactly, we say sir, 6 volts. Now, if I say I will give V input as 7 volts. If I say I will give V input as 7 volts. So we say, my dear friends, 
sir if you give input as 7 volts but this diode will maintain 6 volts potential difference only because this is a zener diode of 6 volts so if across this is 6 across this is 6 across this is 6 output is 6 so we say then it remains constant as 6 volts so which option is the correct option this was one of the best questions of this today's session you got it you got the feel of this one i just need to know in the live chat i just need i hope you got the complete feel of zener diode zener diode a lot of people feel this is the difficult topic to understand but i hope today you got its feel what are the uses how to solve the questions based on this tell me tell me tell me in the chats then i'll give you the break in the chats in the chats if zener diode is crystal and clear Tell me in the chats. Okay. You have got break till we say nine. Sorry, break till ten, ten PM. Okay, dinner. Okay. See you guys at ten ten. Till then we have got a break over here.
Okay, guys. Let me know in the chats if I'm audible and visible properly. <clears throat> yeah, we have the logic gates now. But before that, we have a small topic that is photodiode and light emitting diode. This will take us 10 more minutes and then we'll start the logic gates. <clears throat> okay, let everybody join and we are, we, we, we'll start. Okay. B, it will take more one and a half hours, okay? Most probably we'll get done by 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock we'll get done with this. <coughs> okay? So listen to me over here in this particular case. Let's talk about, let's talk about the photodiode, okay? Let's talk about the photodiode. What does photodiode actually mean? What does photodiode actually mean? <clears throat> See, when it comes to the photodiode, we say, we say, when photons, we say, when photons fall on the diode, on the diode, it is called photodiode. So when photons fall on the diode, it is called the photodiode. Okay. So we say if we have to make the symbol of photodiode, it will be something like this. So this is the diode. Okay. And we say photons are falling onto this particular diode. And this is the symbol of photodiode. Okay, these are the photons falling on the diode and this is what we call the photodiode. Okay. <clears throat> now for what purposes we actually use this particular diode? We say it is used to measure. It is used to measure the intensity of light. It is used to measure the intensity of light. So simply we say it is used to measure the intensity of light, okay? Photodiode is used to measure the intensity of light or we say the number of photons. It is used to measure the number of photons, okay? Now my dear people, how does it actually measure the number of photons? That's what we need to discuss over here. Listen to me very carefully. Let's suppose I'll make this diode over here. Let's suppose we have got this diode over here. Let's suppose we have this diode over here. Okay. Yes. Now, we know, sir, when it comes to the diode, let's make the band diagram of the diode. We say, sir, this is the, let's suppose I'll make the conduction band over here. I'll make the conduction band over here. Let me make the conduction band over here. Okay. And this is what we call the valence band over here. This is what we call the valence band over here this is what we call the valence band over here okay now my dear friends we know this valence band is completely filled this valence band is completely filled when it comes to a semiconductor either you say this is a semiconductor diode or this is a semiconductor one and the same thing okay valence band is completely filled and conduction band is completely empty so we say once we Increase the temperature of the diode. We said these electrons shift from valence band to the conduction band. What does increase in temperature mean? Increase in temperature means we are giving energy to these electrons. If you are increasing the temperature of the semiconductor means you are giving the energy to these electrons. So 
can we not say sir we can give the energy to these electrons by sending the photons we say photons are also called the energy packets so if photons fall onto the diode we say sir in this case these electrons will gain that energy so they will shift from valence band to the conduction band okay so we say now electron will come over here over here over here over here and holes will be produced over here these are the holes which are produced over here okay so when photons fall on the diode we say electrons are shifted from the valence band to the conduction band and when photons fall on the conductor metal surface we say electrons are ejected from the metal surface this we have studied in the photoelectric effect but over here when photons fall on this diode we say electrons shift from valence band to the conduction band we say i'll write over here when photons fall on the diode when photons fall on the diode when photons fall on the diode we say electron hole pairs are created we say electron hole pairs are created okay now my dear friends let me basically make this particular semiconductor something like this over here let me make this particular semiconductor something like this over here since this is a semiconductor diode okay so we say this is a pn junction diode something like this so we say in this particular case this is p side and let's suppose this is n side okay and and forget about this p and n we say this is the semiconductor on which photons are, have exactly fallen and we say because of those photons we say sir these are the electrons and holes which have been created over here okay electrons holes into the entire semiconductor something like this i am showing you over here okay these are the electrons and holes which are being created over here because of the falling of the photons now what i want you guys to do is that i want you guys to basically connect a battery to it i want you guys to basically connect a battery to this particular diode over here okay but this battery this should be in the reverse bias if this is the p side and this is n side this is this should be in the reverse bias so this is the external electric field this is the external electric field now my dear friends my dear friends listen to me very carefully on following the photons we say electron hole pairs are created this is i am showing you this is i am showing over here with the help of band diagram and this is i am showing you over here normal semiconductor crystal so we say sir when you apply the external electric field in the reverse bias condition listen to me very carefully we say sir because of this external electric field we say sir or because of the battery because of the battery or external electric field we say these electrons and holes they will move they will move electrons move something like this holes move something like that so we say electrons and holes move and constitute the current and constitute the current they form the current they form the current okay now my dear friends we will measure that current using a meter a meter we measure that current so what i am trying to say in this particular case is that listen to me very carefully we take a semiconductor on this semiconductor diode photons are falling we say because of the falling of photons electron hole pairs are created now then we applied a battery over here we connected this in the reverse bias and we say when we connect this battery to this particular diode and this is in the reverse bias condition we say sir these electrons and holes will move they produce the current now if i ask you now if i ask you one single thing if if i say sir number of photons falling number of photons 
falling or more if number of photons falling are more are more can we say sir more number of electron hole pairs are created we say electron hole pairs are more we say more electron hole pairs are created yes sir and if more electron hole pairs are created we say sir we say current will be more current will be more yes yes so means if you measure that current if current comes out to be more we say number of photons falling are more what is number of photons falling we say number of photons means intensity number of photons means intensity so this is how it helps us to find the intensity of light so if we say let's suppose light is falling on the semiconductor we say we have to check is this light falling more intensity is more or less so what do we do we basically measure the current over here sir because of the photons falling electron hole pairs are creating due to which current is current flows and we say sir current flows over here we measure that current if current comes out to be more we say number of photons in this case will be more and this is the maximum detail we have to learn about this photodiode this is the maximum detail we have to learn about this photodiode we don't have to go in much detail this is it this is it okay this is it is that clear tell me in the chats guys tell me in the chats tell me in the chats everybody everybody and the question is why do we connect this in the reverse bias not in the forward bias because if we connect this diode in forward bias then huge current will be will flow because of the forward bias because we know in forward bias huge current will flow so if we connect this diode in the reverse bias we say because of that current will be zero so this current which is being produced over here is only because of those electron hole pairs which have been created by the by the falling of photons that's why we are able to measure this small current over here is this crystalline clear to each and everyone tell me guys in the chats everybody everybody only few people are giving me the response i just need to know we have the light emitting diode now what is light emitting diode guys let me know and and make sure you hit the like button everybody out there now we have the light emitting diode that is what we call the led that's what we call the led now see let me see let me just tell you what is this light emitting diode led led is which we use in our homes which gives the basically which gives the which gives the photon which gives the light which gives the light now see we say we know to create electron hole pair we have to supply the energy previously in order to create electron hole pair we have to give the energy we have to supply the energy then only electrons will shift from valence band to the conduction band then only electron hole pairs are created so electron hole pairs will be created okay if we supply the energy to the semiconductor now my dear friends if can we say now if we have to recombine the electron hole pairs in order to create the electron hole pairs we have to supply the energy in the form of photons or you increase the temperature but if the electron hole pairs recombine we say we say in that case energy would be released in that case energy would be released if in a electron hole pairs recombine we say energy would be released in that case energy would be released in that case my dear friends let's suppose i am taking a semiconductor diode over here okay now in this case i am connecting this diode in forward bias in forward bias we can clearly see in this case when we connect the semiconductor in forward bias electron holes will recombine electron holes will recombine okay and in this case when electron holes recombine we say current is produced we say energy is produced energy is released in that case you can either understand it something like this also so now this energy this energy is if we connect 
uh, a diode and forward bias electron hole recombination will take place. This is what I told you. Due to that, energy would be released and this energy would be in the form of photons. So what I'm trying to say, let's suppose I have the LED over here. So this LED is made up of a semiconductor and this semiconductor is forward biased over here. When forward biased, when this semiconductor is forward biased, we say electron holes will recombine. So on recombining electron holes, we say energy is released. Energy is released in the form of what? Lunchbox? No, in the form of photons. So that's why we say if we have the LED over here, it gives the light. It gives the light means it gives the number of photons. Light is photons. So we say, we say, can we say, can we say this light emitting diode is the opposite of photodiode? In case of photodiode, photons fall on the diode. But in case of light emitting diode, photons are released from the diode. So that's why the symbol of photodiode is something like this. Electrons are leaving from the diode. Electrons are leaving from the diode. Okay. 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 Is this clear? Is this clear? Is this clear? And my dear friends, my dear friends, I want you guys to focus on this point. The photons which leave from this photodiode, which leave from this LED. <laughs> Photons which leave from this photons which are given by this particular diode, which are released by this diode, is, is in the order of we say 1 to 2 electron volts. Okay. They are having the energy of 1 to 2 electron volts. Okay. Now, my dear friends, my dear friends. One more important point that I want to add over here is that see. <clears throat> Let's suppose if I ask you, sir, this is an LED. So this LED is forward biased. And if this LED is forward biased means electron holes will recombine, energy is released in the form of photon. So it gives the light. My question to you is, sir, what type of semiconductor is used in LEDs? We say when it comes to the semiconductors, we use GAS gas semiconductors. Okay. That is gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide semiconductors, okay? Because, because when it comes to the energy band gap of gallium semiconductor, that is 1.5 electron volts. Energy band gap of gallium semiconductor is 1.5 electron volts. So, the photons which are released from this LED, the energy of those photons is equal to the energy band gap of semiconductor. If we use, let's suppose, the semiconductor which is having the band gap 0.7 electron volts. So the photons which are released from this have the same energy band gap of 0.7 electron volts. So this gas semiconductor, our gallium arsenide semiconductor, has got 1.5 electron volts energy band gap. So that's why the photons released from this are, we say, having a, having a good energy. Having a good energy. Okay? Is this clear, guys? Simply, sir, when it comes to the LED, sir, LED, in case of LED, we use a semiconductor which is forward biased. Because when semiconductor is forward biased, electron hole recombination takes place and photons are released. Okay? And what type of semiconductor we use in LED? Gas, gallium arsenide, which has the energy band gap of, we say, which has the energy band gap of, we say simply, that is, that is over here, uh, 1.5 electron volts. Okay. Now you have the assertion reason over here. Okay. We have the assertion reason over here and... Now this one, okay, let's first follow some of these assertion reasons over here. This was the question which was actually asked in, we say, Ames 2017. <clears throat> tell me, tell me, this was the question which was asked in uh, Ames 2017. Okay. 
Tell me in this particular question. See, we say absorption factor of this gas is large as compared to the silicon for sunlight. If you have the, let's suppose silicon, if you have the gas, okay. When it comes to the gas, we prefer gas semiconductors in case of making the LEDs, okay. Why? Because we say absorption factor of gas is large as compared to the silicon. So more number of photons will enter in this case. We say more electrons, uh, sorry, we say in this particular case, we say electron holes will recombine in this case and the photons which are being released in this case will have the large energy over here, okay. Because reason it is saying in this particular case, that is delta EG is more for, we say, gas. As when it comes to the uh, silicon, it has, I guess, 1 electron volt or 0 0.7 electron volt, it has the energy band gap. So the photons which come out of that, so the photons which come out of that has got less energy band gap as compared to this one, okay? This is also correct. Assertion is correct. Absorption factor for gas is large as compared to the silicon for sunlight. Okay. This energy band gap is more for, we say, gas semiconductor. This is also correct. This is also correct. But this is not the reason for this one. This is not the correct reason for this one. So option B in this case. Option B in this case. Okay. This was also asked in basically... Ames 2017. Photodiode always works in under reverse bias condition. Photodiode always works under reverse bias condition. Is it true? Is it true? Photodiode always works in reverse bias condition. Is for, does photodiode diode work in reverse bias condition or in forward bias condition? Tell me. Sir, photodiodes always works in reverse bias condition. This is true because I told you when it comes to the LED, it works in forward bias condition and photodiode um, works in reverse bias condition. Okay. So we say it is easier to detect current changes in reverse bias. It is easier to detect current change in reverse bias. We say yes. See, if you connect the photodiode and forward bias, in case of forward bias, forward current will be very large. So it is very difficult for us to measure the current because of the those electrons and holes which have been created by photons. So we say this is correct, this is correct and this is the correct reason for assertion in this case. So we say option A in this one. Yes, option A, option A. Think about these questions later on from your end only because I have told you the entire theory when it comes to these questions, okay? Now, let's move on to over here. This is the logic gates. Now, see, what do we, this is very important from the need perspective, very important. Now, what do we have to exactly study when it comes to the logic gates? What do we have to exactly study when it comes to the logic gates? Listen to me very carefully over here. When it comes to the logic gates, when it comes, this is a very easy topic, okay? When it comes to the logic gate, see, we say in case of logic gates, we will have to study about few devices. Let's suppose if I say I have got the device over here, okay, this is the device. And in this device, we say, let's suppose we give some input A. And let's suppose we give some input B. These are, we say, sir, inputs. We are making a device in which we give input. And this device exactly produces the output. Okay, this device exactly produces the output. Let's suppose it produces A plus B. So over here, we have to study about different gates, different devices in which we give some input and which produces some output. Let's suppose over here, we are giving the input A and input B. This device is producing the output A plus B. Similarly, we will have another device which in which we give some input, which will multiply that input and produce the output. So all of those are what we call the gates. So in logic gates, we'll have to study different devices 
in which we give input and it produces the output. So let me just tell you before that, my dear friends, when it comes to, when it comes to these logic gates, we have to first understand Boolean algebra. Listen to me very carefully. As sir, you are saying over here, if you have got a device, if you have got a device, and in this device, you are giving this input A and you are giving this input B and you are getting the output over here. My dear friends, what I'm trying to say in this case, this input or this output, this is what we call the digital signal. This input and output is what we call the digital signal. Listen to me very carefully. This input and this output is what we call the digital signal. And this digital signal can be either in the form of 0 or we say 1. Means over here, the devices that you will study, the input that you will be giving, you can either give 0 or you can give 1. In this case also, you can give the input as 0 or you can give the input as 1. Okay? So we say you can get the output 0 and 1 only. Now, I'll just write over here. I'll just write over here. Here, the input and output is in the form of 0 and 1 only is in the form of 0 and 1 only. Sir, is there any other name of 0? Yes, we say 0 means 0 volts also. Sir, 0 means low also. Sir, low means off also. Either you say 0 volts, low, off, it is one and the same thing. And this 1 means 5 volts. Another name is high. Another name is on. So if I say from now onwards, input is on means 1. If I say from now onwards, input is 0 means off. 0 means low, okay? This is, this is basically, this is basically the scene over here, okay? So we say when it comes to this Boolean algebra, the digital inputs and outputs is in the form of 0 and 1. So all the gates that we study over here, the input can be either in the form of 0 and in the form of 1. Now, my dear friends, listen to me very carefully. Like you have the normal algebra over there you have studied in class 8, 7, 4, 5th. Similarly, you have the Boolean algebra over here. Like, like, in this, see, over there in normal algebra, you have studied addition, multiplication. Similarly, in this Boolean algebra, in this Boolean algebra, you have to study the addition. You have to study the multiplication, okay? Now, my dear friends, in this case, I told you, you can have only two numbers. The first one is 0 and the second one is 1. Okay. Let's suppose if I, let's suppose first we discuss the addition of these digital signals. If you have, let's suppose 0 over here, means low. And if you have 0, 0 plus 0, always remember it is 0. And let's suppose if you have this 0, if you have this 1, what is this 0 and 1? This is the digital signal. If you have this 0, if you have this 1, we say 0 plus 1 is we say 1. Low plus high is always high. And if you have this high, 1 plus 1 is always 1. Remember it, okay? You have to remember it. Now, we say, sir, let's suppose this A plus 0. Sir, as you said, the Boolean, the digital signal can be either in the form of 0 or 1. Why are you saying, sir, what is this A over here? See. This, if I just write over here, listen to me very carefully. When it comes to, if I have to write a plus 0, what is the value of a plus 0? Listen to me very carefully. I told you digital signal can be in the form of either 1 or it can be either in the form of 0. So if I say, my dear friends, if I say a is equal to 1, can you put 1 over here? So it will be 1 plus and this will be 0. 1 plus 0 is 0. And if I say, if I say, if, if, if I say A is equal to 0, A can be either 0, A can be either 1. So put 0 over here. So 0 plus this 0 will be 0. Now, my dear friends, now, my dear friends, in this case, sorry, 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. 
Now, my dear friends, we can clearly see over here, the value of a plus 0 is coming out to be 1. The value of a plus 0 is coming out to be 0 also. So, means I can say the value of a plus 0 is a. a can be 0, a can be 1. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, let's suppose we have a plus 1. So, let's find out what is the value of a plus 1. See, let's suppose if I have to find the value of a plus 1, a can have two values, 0 and 1. If I say, if we say a is equal to 0, so we say this will be 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. Okay. And if I say, if I say a is equal to 1, in that case, this will be 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. See, in both the cases, if we are putting a is equal to 0, the answer of this term is coming out to be 1. If we are putting a is equal to 1, the answer of this term is coming out to be 1. So in both the cases, answer is 1. So that's why we say a plus 1 is 1. Is this clear? Similarly, if you put and solo this one, it will also come out to be 1. If you take any of the expression over here and then add 1 over here at the end, it will come out to be 1. Now, now, what is this a bar? What is this a bar? Let's suppose we have 1 over here. We say, sir, 1. Its bar means inverse, opposite. We say, sir, 1, its bar, opposite of 1 will be 0. That's we say inverse. Similarly, if you have 0 inverse, bar of 0, that is 1. Opposite of 0 is 1. Similarly, if you have A, sir, if you have A bar, A bar is the reverse of A, opposite of A. And if you have A double bar, so remember from now onwards, if you have a double bar, it will come out to be a only. See how? Let's suppose if you have a double bar, you have to find its answer. If we put a is equal to 0, if we put a is equal to 0, so put 0 over here, 0 double bar. So listen to me very carefully. 0, 1 bar, 0, 1 bar is 1. It will be 1 and then you have this upper bar. 1 bar is 0, so it will be 0. That's why I told you this cancels this cancels, it will come out to be A only. So A double bar is A only. Let's talk about the multiplication. Tell me in the chats, is this clear? Is this clear guys? Everybody in the chats? And make the like count 500. Huh? <clears throat> So this is, see, in logic gates, we have to study about different devices in which we give input and we'll get output. This input and output can be either in the form of 0 and 1. And that is what we call the digital signals. And we have to study about Boolean algebra over here. What is Boolean algebra? Boolean algebra is basically addition of, addition of these input signals, multiplication of these input signals, like... In normal algebra in class 8, you have studied addition, subtraction, multiplication. Over here, you have addition, multiplication, and inverse. Now, my dear people, listen to me very carefully. If I talk about this one, multiplication, okay? So, if you have got 0 over here, we say then 0. So, we say 0 multiplied by 0 is 0. Low into low is low. 0 multiplied by 1 is 0, okay? 1 into 1 is, we say, sir, 1 only. A into 0 is 0 only, okay? You can, you can find the answer of this on your own, okay? And A into 1 is A only, okay? Then you have A into A bar. A into A bar is 0. Let me show you, let me show you this last one. Let me show you this. You have to remember all of these, okay? Let me show you this one. We say, sir, A into A bar. We have to find its answer. So let's suppose, let's suppose my dear friends, if we say if a is equal to 0, so we say this is 0 into 0 bar, 0 bar is 1, that will be 0, okay? Now if we say if a is equal to 1, if you put a is equal to 1, so put over here 1 into 1 bar, that is 0, so 1 into 0, it will come out to be 0. In both the cases, it will come out to be 0, that's why it is 0, okay? Is this clear? You have to remember all these. You have to remember all these and you have to remember all these. 
Now you have the De Morgan's law. Tell me in the chats if this is clear. Tell me in the chats, everybody, if this is clear. clear. Is this clear, guys? Okay. Now see, what does De Morgan's law actually say? De Morgan's law says that if you have, sir, A plus B, if you have got A plus B, and you have got whole bar over here. Bar is on the two, common bar. De Morgan says that if you want to break this bar, you can break this bar easily. So you can write it something like this A bar and you can write B bar. You just have to do only one thing. That is change this sign from addition to multiplication. If you want to break the bar, then you have to change the sign also. Now, if we have, let's suppose, A into B whole bar. A into B whole bar. So, De Morgan says you can break this bar. That is A bar and you can write B bar. But you have to change this multiplication to addition. If you want to break the bar, you have to change the sign. You have to change the sign. Let's come on to this one. Commutative law. Now, what does commutative law actually say? Commutative law simply says that if you have, if you have, let's suppose A plus B. What is A? A can be the digital signal 0 or 1. B can be the digital signal 0 or 1. There is no subtraction over here in case of Boolean algebra. There is only multiplication and we say addition over here. <laughs> HSP sir in the chats. Thank you sir. Thank you sir. Yes. 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 Now see. We say. If we have A plus B, you can write this A plus B as B plus A also. A plus B is equal to B plus A. A plus B is equal to B plus A. Okay. And then you have associative law. What does associative law say? It says that if you have A plus, then you have B plus C. Over here, if you have A, then plus B plus C. Bracket is over here for B and C. B and C is in the bracket over here. B and C is in the bracket over here. So you can write this. You can change this bracket. You can write it something like this. A plus B. You can keep the bracket for these two. And then you can say A plus B plus C. A plus B plus C. Okay. And if you have distributive law over here. When it comes to the distributive law. You can say these are the basic basic things. Okay. So, we say if you have A dot B plus C, you can write this, multiply A with this, that is A dot B, plus you can say, sir, A into this C, that is A into C. This is what we call the distributive law over here. Okay. Is this clear? Is this clear? These are the basic, basic things, okay. Now see, let's basically come on to the gates. Let's come on to the gates. So first we need to understand three types of gates over here. First we need to understand three types of gates over here. Sir, what are the gates? Gates are the devices which take input and produce output. We say, sir, gates are the devices which take input and produce output. Which take input and produce output. Gates are those or devices which basically take input and produce output. Different gates perform different mathematical operations, okay? Now, first and the foremost thing is we need to talk about the fundamental gates. We need to talk about the fundamental gates. 
fundamental gates. Let's talk about the fundamental gates. So what are the fundamental gates? We have three gates. The first one is we say, sir, not. Then we have second is we say, sir, or not gate. We say, sir, or gate. And the third one is we say, sir, we say, sir, and gate. So we have three fundamental gates. The first one is not, the second one is or, and the third one is and. Let's first understand what is the working of this not gate. Not gate. What is the working of this not gate? Let's first understand the working of not gate. Okay. Listen to me very carefully. The working of, as I told you, when it comes to the gate, it is a device which takes input, produce output. So when it comes to this not gate, we say, sir, we say, sir, in case of not gate, its work, its work is to do inverse. Its work is to do inverse or its work is to do inverse operation. What does that mean? Sir, the symbol, if we talk about its symbol. The symbol of this not gate, the symbol of this not gate, when it comes to the symbol, when it comes to the symbol, when it comes to the symbol, we say, sir, its symbol is simply this is the symbol of not gate. This is the symbol of not gate. We say, if you give the input as A, this is what we call the input over here. And what will it do? Its job is to do inverse. It will do the inverse. So output will be y is equal to a bar. This will be output. A bar means inverse. Means if you give the input as 1, it will produce the output as 0. So we say in this particular case, my dear friends, in this particular case, it's Boolean expression. It's, we say it's Boolean expression. is y is equal to a bar. Its Boolean expression is y is equal to a bar. Okay. Means its job is to do inverse. Let's make the truth table. Truth table. Sir, what is the truth table? Truth table means a relationship between input and output. Relationship between input and output. So how to make that? Let me just show you over here. See. See. We say if you have the input A and what is the output of this? We say sir y is equal to A bar. Means if you give the input 0 over here, what is the output in this case? That is 0 bar, that will be 1. If you give the 1 over here, it will be 0 over here. Is this clear? And the second thing I just want you guys to make the time scale over here. That is time scale. Sir, what is time scale? Time scale means representing the input on the graph. Kind of, you can understand it something like that. Let's suppose we say, if we make, if we say, we'll give the input A. So let's suppose we are giving the different inputs. So initially we'll give input as, let's suppose zero. And then we will give the input as, let's suppose one. Then we'll give the input as we say zero. Again, we will give zero. Again, we will give 1 and 1, okay? This is the, we are, be, we have got a NOT gate. In case of NOT gate, we are giving different inputs, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And we are representing those inputs on a graph. 0 means low, 1 means high. This is how we represent it. So what will be the output? We say, sir, y. We have to produce y. We know, sir, when it comes to the output, output means y is equal to a bar. What is the zero bar that will be sir 1? Output of this zero is 1. And what is the output of 1 sir? That will be 0. Output of we say sir this it will be 1. This will be also 1 because in zero bar is 1, zero bar is 1. And then we say sir output of this is 0 and this is also 0. This is how do we exactly represent it on the time scale. Now my dear friends, let's talk about the Let's talk about the electrical equivalent. 
electrical equivalent circuit of electrical equivalent circuit of we say not gate electrical equivalent circuit of not gate sir what does that mean electrical equivalent circuit of not gate electrical equivalent circuit of not gate means we will have to make a circuit which exactly behaves like not gate which exactly works like not gate so let me make the circuit over here let's suppose this is the bulb and this is the switch over here and then we connect the battery listen to me very carefully this is the bulb and this is the key over here see let me make the input and output over here key means input and bulb means sir output listen to me very carefully if i say over here sir the current will leave from the bulb tell me current always prefers the path which has got less resistance now if i say in this particular case i am closing this switch over here so means the current will come and it will follow this particular path the current will come and it will follow this particular path why because there is no resistance across this and over here in this path you have path you have got the bulb and bulb has the resistance so current always prefers to flow through that path in which there is no resistance so we say my dear people listen to me very carefully if i say if i say we will keep the key on we will keep the key on okay means you are connecting this so we say in that case current will choose this path current will not flow through the bulb so bulb will not glow bulb remains off so when key is on on means one bulb remains off off means zero and when you say sir it it is off okay this circuit current cannot flow through this so current has to flow through the bulb when key is off bulb will be on now can you compare this truth table with the truth table of not gate exactly similar so we say we say this electrical circuit is exactly behaving like this electrical circuit is exactly behaving like the not gate is this clear current flow off means my dear friend in this case in this case if i say if i say key is on what does key on mean it means you have connected this now current can flow through this one this is what on means off means this 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 cannot flow so current has to flow through the bulb current has to flow through the bulb okay tell me is this clear let's move on to the next gate that's what we call the or gate is this clear is this clear so we say when it comes to the or gate we say its work is to do addition its work is to do addition and if i talk about the symbol if i talk about the symbol its symbol is something like this this is the symbol if we give the input a if we give the input b so output will be y is equal to a plus b because its job is to do the addition okay oh and if we talk about its boolean expression sir its boolean expression is simply y is equal to a plus b okay so we say this is the work of this one let's make the truth table over here let's make the truth table over here my dear people listen to me very carefully if how do we exactly make its truth table over here <clears throat> let's make the truth table over here see 
Let's suppose this is the input A, this is the input B, and this is the output Y is equal to A plus B. If we are giving the input as 0, A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1, what will be the output? 0 plus 1 is 1. If we are giving this 1, this 0, 1 plus 0 is 1. If we are giving this 1, this 1, 1 plus 1 is 1. If we are giving this 0, this 0, 0 plus 0 is 0. Now, clearly you can see in this particular case, clearly in this you can see in this particular case, see, the input is high, this, sorry, output is high. When, when any of the three inputs is high, when any of the three inputs is high, output is high. See, output is high means one. You can see over here input is high, this input is high, this input is high. And when both the inputs are low, output is low. So we say output is high in case of OR gate when any of the three inputs is high. So I'll just write over here. Output is high when any of the two inputs is high. This statement will help us to solve the problems of previous year questions okay and and we say second point is output is low when any of the two output is low when when both when both the both the inputs, inputs are low. We say output is low when both the inputs are low. Is this clear? Is this clear? Cool. Now see, let's make the time scale. Let's make the time scale. Let's make the time scale. So let's take the input A, let's take the input B. Okay. So first we'll make the time scale. This is one. This is, this is 0, this is 1 and then we'll give the input as 0, again 0, 0, 0 and then we'll give 1, then we'll give 1. Similarly, we'll give over here, let's suppose this is 0 and this is also 0 and then we'll give 1, 1 and then we'll give 0. And we have to make the output y in the time scale. Output is a plus b, 0 plus 0 is, we say sir, 0. 1 plus 0 is, we say, sir, this will be 1. 0 plus 1 is, we say, 1. 0 plus 1 is, we say, 1. Okay? 1 plus 0 is, we say, sir, 1. This is the output over here. This is the output over here. And now let's make the electrical equivalent circuit. Electrical equivalent circuit of, we say, sir, OR gate. Now you have to make the electrical equivalent circuit of OR gate. And I want you guys to at least make the try over here, okay? Try making the electrical equivalent circuit of this OR gate. See, when it comes to the electrical equivalent circuit of OR gate, I'll show you, this will be something like this. We have got key 1, we have got key 2, and... You have got this bulb over here. This is the bulb. This is key 1, key 2 and this is the battery. Now, my dear friends, my dear friends, if you make a truth table over here, some sort of truth table. Sir, what is that? That is basically you have got key 1, key 2. These are the two inputs and bulb is basically output. 
you have to make an electrical circuit which exactly behaves like the not gate sorry or gate now see listen to me very carefully listen to me very carefully if we say let's suppose we'll keep the key one off key one is basically off means it is open circuit over here my dear friends i told you and this key two is basically on i told you one thing that is that is listen to me very carefully i say sir the current always prefer to flow through that path in which there is less resistance Sir, if this K1 is off, we say, sir, current has to flow through this path and it can flow through this bulb because current always flow through the loop. So current will prefer this path and flow through the bulb and bulb remains on in this case. So we can clearly see. So bulb remains on. It is one. Now, if I say if we keep this on and this off, in this case, current will prefer this upper path and flow through the bulb and bulb remains on. And if I say both are on, current can flow through this path and this path and then flows through the bulb, bulb remains on. And if I say I'll keep this off and this also off, okay? This is open over here, this is open over here. If current flows, if both the lines are open, so current cannot cross, so bulb in that case remains off. You can compare this with this. Both are exactly same. So I can say this particular circuit exactly behaves like an OR gate. Is this clear? Is this clear? Let's move on to the next one. We have got AND gate. We have got AND gate. We have got AND gate. See, when it comes to the AND gate, we say it's work is to do multiplication. Its work is to do multiplication. And if we talk about its symbol, so its symbol is something like this. Its symbol is something, this is Y, this is A and this is B. Output in this case will be Y is equal to A into B. And if we talk about its Boolean expression, If we talk about its Boolean expression, we say, sir, over here, Boolean expression will be simply y is equal to a dot b. This will be the Boolean expression. And my dear friends, if I just try to make the truth table over here, if I just try to make the truth table over here, okay? So we say, sir, this is A, we say, sir, this is B, we say Y is equal to A into B, okay? So my dear friends, if I say, let's suppose this is 0 and this is 1, input is 0, A is 0, B is 1, 0 into 1 is, we say, sir, 0. If we say this is 0, 1 and this is 0, 1 into 0 is 0. If we say this is 0 and this is 0, 0 into 0 is 0. If we say this is 1 and this is 1, 1 into 1 is 1. Now, clearly you can see over here, sir, output is low. If any of the two inputs is low, in this case, this is low, in this case, this is low, in this case, this is low. If any of the two inputs is low, we say output is low. I'll just write over here, output is low if any of the Two inputs if any of the two inputs is low and I can say output is high output is high if any of the two inputs is high if any of the two inputs is high okay both the inputs are high, then only output is high. Now, if I just talk about the electrical equivalent circuit, electrical equivalent circuit of 
इलेक्ट्रिकल इक्विलेंट सर्किट ऑफ एंड गेट इलेक्ट्रिकल इक्विलेंट सर्किट ऑफ एंड गेट ओके इज दिस क्लेटिल ओवर ह्योर इज दिस क्लेटिल ओवर ह्योर एवरीबडी आउट देयर टेल मी इन द चार्ज टेल मी इन द चार्ज All the people out there, tell me, electrical equivalent circuit of and of and gate. So, output is high if 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 both the inputs are high. if both the inputs are high so electrical equivalent circuit of vc sir and gate it will be something like this this is k1 k1 this is k2 this switch 1 this is switch 2 and then you have got this battery you have got this bulb over here now if i just try to make over here it's truth table so we say this is this is this is this is key 1 this is key 2 and this is bulb if i say let's suppose key 1 is off this is off key 2 is on so we say sir current will leave from this battery and key 1 is off so current cannot pass over here so it will not reach the bulb so bulb remains off if i say this is on this is off current can pass this switch but cannot pass this because this is off so bulb remains off if sir both are off then also bulb is off now if both are on this is connected this is connected that is one one then bulb will glow you can compare this truth table with this truth table you can see exactly both are similar so this circuit exactly behaves like an and gate is this clear is this clear tell me in the chats guys Time scale you can make it. That's not a big deal. Okay, that's easy. Just put up the value of inputs, outputs, and then find the value of y a dot b. Simple, guys. Hmm. Let's talk about the NOR gate. And this is we have. This is the universal gate. We have the fundamental gates. We have the universal gates. universal gate is nor gate and nand gate this is what we call universal gate okay time scale i am telling you to make it on your own that is very simple sir what is this not gate we say listen to me very careful nor gate listen to me very gate. carefully when it comes to basically nor gate we say we say when or gate is combined with we say sir not gate it forms it forms we say nor gate we say it forms nor gate when or gate is combined with not gate it forms nor gate so what is the how do we exactly make it see when it comes to the or gate we know sir the or gate looks something like this this is the or gate and when it comes to sir not gate this is how nor gate actually looks like 
सो वी से दिस इज सर और दिस इज सर वी से सर नॉट तो और प्लस नॉट मेक्स वट मेक्स वट नॉर गेट मेक्स वट नॉर गेट सो वी से सर और प्लस वी से सर नॉट इज इक्वल टू सर नॉर गेट लेट सपोज इफ वी आर गिविंग द इनपुट एज ए इफ वी आर गिविंग द इनपुट बी वट इज द वर्क ऑफ ऑर गेट टू एड सो आउटपुट ऑफ दिस विल बी ए प्लस बी नव दिस आउटपुट विल बिकम द इनपुट ऑफ नॉट इट विल एंटर एज इनपुट ऑफ नॉट एंड वट इज द वर्क ऑफ नॉट इट्स वर्क इज टू अप्लाई द बार सो आउटपुट इन दिस केस विल बी ए प्लस बी एंड दिस विल बी बार ए प्लस बी दिस विल बी बार a plus b this so if i just talk about the symbol in short if you just write symbol of this one so that will be simply this is the symbol of we say sir nor gate so if you take this and instead of this whole knot you take the ball only at place it over here and this will be sir y a this is b and y is equal to a plus b bar this is the output this is what we call the nor gate this is what we call the nor gate okay and if we talk about this boolean expression <coughs> sir boolean expression is y is equal to a plus b bar and let's make the truth table let's make the truth table over here let's make the truth table over here let's make the truth table over here so the truth table will be something like this so we say in this particular case this is a this is b this is y is equal to a plus b and this is bar y is equal to a plus b bar my dear friends my dear friends if i say sir i'll give this as 1 this is 0 and this is 1 plus 0 bar a plus b bar 1 plus 0 is 1 and bar of 1 is we say sir 0 and if i say i'll give this 0 this is 1 0 plus 1 is 1 and bar of 1 is 0 if i say this is this is 0 and this is 0 this is 1 1 1 plus 1 is 1 and its bar is 0 and this is 0 and this is 0 0 plus 0 is 0 0 bar is 1 this is the truth table now in this particular case i can say sir output is low when any of the two inputs is high over here this both are high over here this is i over here this is i so we say output is low when any of the two inputs when any of the two inputs is low output is low when any of the two inputs is low okay and when it comes to my dear friends output is high when both the inputs are low output is high when both the inputs are low you can clearly see over here when both the inputs a and b are low then only output is coming out to be 1 then only output is basically high okay and now let's make the time scale of this one let's make the time scale of this one let's make the time scale of this one see when it comes to the time scale listen to me very carefully over here when it comes to the time scale let's suppose we'll give the input as a so this is 0 this is 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 and let's suppose input b i am giving as 0 0 1 1 0 0 
zero zero one one zero zero. Now we'll have to make the output, sir. What is the output? Output output is a plus b bar. So this is a and this is b. So a plus b bar zero plus zero is zero, and bar of zero is one. So output in this case will be one. Okay. Now one plus zero, sir. When it comes to one plus zero, we say one plus zero is one. Okay. And bar of one is zero. This is zero. And one plus zero is one. Bar of zero is one plus zero is one. Bar of one is zero. Be zero. And this will also be zero. This will also be zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Bar of zero is we say sir one. Is this clear? Is this time scale clear? Is this time scale clear? Tell me in the chats. Tell me in the chats. Now, let's make the electrical equivalent circuit. Let's make the electrical equivalent circuit. Okay. The circuit which exactly behaves like NOR gate. We say electrical equivalent circuit of electrical equivalent circuit of we say sir NOR gate NOR gate see I'll make it something like this This is key one, this is key two, and this is bulb over here. Key one, key two, and this is bulb over here. See, if we just make the truth table for this one, so we'll make it something like this. This is K1, this is K2, and this is bulb. See, let's suppose if I say this is 0 and this is 1, K1 is off and K2 is on. Listen to me very carefully. So I'm saying K1 is on, K1 is off. This is off means this is open. So, and this is on, this is on, this is connected. So in this case, in this case, I can clearly say the current can basically flow through this path and the current can also flow through this path. I told you current only prefers that path in which there is less resistance. We say sir this is the path where there is no resistance and this is the path where there is bulb means resistance. So current will if this is off so current cannot flow through this path. So current will leave 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 it can flow through this path in a closed loop and if current flows through this path current does not reach the bulb. So we say in this case bulb remains off zero. And if this is 1, this is 0. In this case, this is off. Current will take, choose this particular path in the loop. So this will be also 0. Now, if I say this is on, this is on. Both are on. So means in that case, current can flow through this path. Current can flow through this path. So current does not reach the bulb and it remains off. And if this is off, this is off, this is off, this is off then only bulb remains on because in that case we say if this is off current cannot flow through this and current cannot flow through this because this is off this is off current has to flow through this path and you can compare this this with this one both are exactly similar both are exactly similar is this clear is this clear Okay, one more point I just want to tell you in this case, that is single we say single input nor gate behaves single input nor gate behaves like a not gate what does that mean listen to me very carefully 
Let's suppose we have got a NOR gate over here. So this is NOR gate. This is the input A, this is the input B over here. Okay. Now my dear friends, what is the output in this case? Y is equal to A plus B and this is bar. I want the, how many inputs this NOR gate actually has. This has got two inputs over here, A and B. I want you guys to make this a single input. How do you do that? By connecting these two inputs, we can make this a single input. Sir, how? See, if I say I am giving one as input over here. Now this one, this one can go into the upper one in A and this one can go into the lower one B. Means in this case, A is one and B is one. By connecting the two inputs, we are making it a single input. We are making it a single input NOR gate. We are making it single input NOR gate. So my dear people, listen to me very carefully. We say, sir, in this particular case, if we say, sir, over here, over here, here, we can say A is equal to B. A is equal to B. If you are making this as single input, whatever is the input in A will be the input in B. So what is the output in this case? So output is, output is, so we say y is equal to a plus, instead of b, can I also write, sir, a bar? Sir, a plus a, a plus a is a. So this will be, sir, a bar. Now you tell me one thing. What is the, for which gate output is a bar? It is not gate. So we say which is the output of NOT gate. As I have told you, if we have, let's suppose this is a NOT gate over here, you are giving the input A, what is the output? Y is equal to A bar. That's what, single input NOR gate. If you are giving some output, what is input? What is the output in that case? We say A bar. So if we say this behaves like a NOT gate. Tell me, is this clear? Tell me, is this clear? Tell me, is this clear in the chats, everybody? It is 11.29 right now, huh? 11, this is the five minute break I'll take. 11.35 will be here only. We'll have to get done with this by 12 o'clock. We'll have to finish this at 12.
Guys, 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 wake up, wake up, wake up. We need to end this particular session. Okay. So let's move on. Okay, do we have the question which was asked in need 2017? So in this question, the electric given electrical network is we are given this one. See, listen to me very carefully. Let me solve it over here. We have to say this circuit is OR gate, NOR gate, NOT gate, or AND gate. Listen to me very carefully. We are given the input over here. This gate is which one? This gate over here, we can say clearly this is nothing but we say sir NOR. Okay. And this is single input NOR, single input NOR. And this one is not. This is nor single input nor and this is not. Let me just show you in this particular case if we are giving the input A and B. So output will be over here A plus B bar. Okay. And my dear friends, this itself behaves like a not gate. And what is the output of not gate? Whatever you give the input, it will, it will put the bar. So it will be A plus B bar and whole bar, double bar. Now, these two bars will get cancelled. Let me basically make it over here. So, so it will be something like this. It will be something like this. You have got this A, you have got this B. And this will be, sir, A plus B bar. Okay. Because when it comes to, when it comes to, sir, nor gate, nor simply adds and puts up the bar. This is the output of nor. And then you have single input nor. Single input nor means not itself. This is not. So what is the output of not? Whatever the input you will give, it will put the bar. If you give A, it will put A bar. So it will... Output will be simply, output will be simply in this case, A plus B bar, and then you have one more bar. And these two will cancel, so we have A plus B over here. We have A plus B over here. Okay, because the two bars cancel. Now, this A plus bar B enters this one. This is the NOT gate. Once again, sir, what was the work of NOT gate? To put up the bar. So, if A plus B is entering, Output will be A plus B bar. So we say in this case, this which means this is nothing but NOR gate. Because this is the output of NOR gate. Output of NOR gate is A plus B bar. A plus B bar. So this is, we say sir, NOT gate. Sorry, sorry. This is, we say sir, NOR gate. NOR is which one? NOR gate. Is this clear? Is this clear? Enough, enough. Let's move on to the NAND gate. If we talk about the NAND gate, sir, NAND gate is basically the combination of, it is the combination of, we say, sir, AND gate. Let me make this AND gate plus, we say, sir, NOT gate. So when basically AND gate combines with, we say, sir, NOT gate, it forms the NAND gate. AND plus NOT, we say, sir, AND plus, we say, sir, NOT is equal to, we say, sir, NAND. Okay. If this is A, this is B. So what is the output of this A? This will be simply A into B, A into B. Now this A into B will go over here and final output will be A, B bar, A, B bar. So if we just talk about the symbol, symbol of NAND gate will be simply, it will be simply something like this. Instead of this hole, we'll take the ball only and we'll place it over here. So this is A, this is B and output will be A, B and this is bar. So this is basically the NAND gate. This is basically the NAND gate. This is basically the NAND gate. Yes, this is for NEED 2025 also. So we say A, B and whole bar. 
Now, my dear friends, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. This is basically the Boolean expression of this NAND gate. And if I talk about its truth table, truth table. See, if I talk about its truth table, so we say this is input A, we say this is input B, and output is Y is equal to A, B, and this is bar. Now, my dear friends, let's suppose this is 0 and this is 1. 0 into 1 is 0 and its bar is, we say, 1. If this is 1 and this is 0, 1 into 0 is 0 and its bar is 1. We say, sir, 0, 0. 0 into 0 is 0 and its bar is 1. We say, 1, 1. 1 into 1 is 1 and its bar is 0. Now, from this clearly you can see, if any of the two inputs is low, output is high. I can write over here. If any of the two inputs, two inputs is low, we say output is high. Okay. And, and we can write the second statement as if both the inputs are high, then output is low. So we say, sir, output is low if both the inputs are high. Output is low if both the inputs are high. Is that clear? Is that clear? Tell me in the chats, everybody. Is that clear? Now, my dear friends, let's talk about its electrical equivalent circuit. Electrical equivalent circuit of NAND gate. And I want you guys to make its, make its uh, uh, time scale on your own. Make its time scale on your own. When it comes to the electrical equivalent circuit, it will be something like this. This is, we say, sir, key one, this is key two, and this is bulb. Okay, key one, key two, and this is bulb. Now, see, in this particular case, if you just make its time truth table, this is K1, this is K2, and this is bulb. See, when let's suppose K1 is off and K2 is on, we say, sir, we say, listen to me very carefully. If this K1 is off and this is on, we say, sir, if current flows from this side, it cannot cross this K2 because this is off. So current has to flow through the bulb and cross over here. In this case, we say, sir, bulb remains on. Bulb remains on. And if I say this is off, this is on. In this case, also bulb is on. This is on, this is off. So we say current cannot flow through this wire. Current has to flow through the bulb. And if we say both are off, this is off, this is off, then only bulb remains on. And if I say this is on and this is on, then current will choose this path. So bulb remains off. Now you can clearly compare this with this. Both are same. Both are same. So we can say they are exactly similar. So this is the electrical equivalent circuit. Now let's move on to the questions now. Now we have to solve some questions and we are done. So the first question we have on the screen, let me make it over here. It is, we have got the key one. We have got the key two over here. Okay. And we have got the bulb over here. And we have got one more resistance and then you have the grounded over here. Okay, this is bulb. And this is plus 6 volts. This is resistance R. This is resistance R. This is K1. This is K2. You have to tell me in this particular case. You have to tell me in this particular case. You have to tell me in this particular case. This was asked in NEED 2019. You have to tell me. This looks like 
this 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 is the electrical equivalent circuit of which gate and gate or gate nand gate nor gate this is the electrical equivalent circuit of which gate and or nand nor you have to tell me over here this is the electrical equivalent circuit of which gate see let me just tell you the trick how to solve this particular question let's make it let's make a truth table let's make it truth table so we say this is k1 this is k2 and this is bulb listen to me very carefully i'll make you understand i'll make you understand listen to me very carefully we'll make a truth table it is very simple once you basically make it truth table okay now see if i say let's suppose this is the plus 6 volts current always flow from higher potential to lower potential and this will be 0 volts if it is showing something like this means this is grounded this is 0 volts current will flow from plus 6 to 0 if i let's suppose say if i let's suppose say this k1 is on and k2 is off tell me one thing sir k1 is on k2 is off Sir, current will always prefer that path in which there is no resistance. So, current will prefer this path. So, K1 it can cross, but K2 it cannot cross because K2 is off. So, then current has only one path that is this one current has to flow through the bulb. So, we say in this particular case, we say in this particular case, bulb remains on. And if I say my dear friends, listen to me very carefully. If I say my dear friends, this is off and this is on this bulb is off and this is on so current again cannot flow through this path current has to flow through this path bulb remains on now my dear friends if i say if i say if i say this is off this is also off again current cannot pass through this current has to flow through the bulb bulb remains on and if i say k1 is on k2 is on then in that case my dear friends the current will flow through this path because there is no resistance in this path so we say we say in this case bulb remains off now you can clearly see over here output is high when any of the two inputs is low output is high when any of the two inputs is low and output is low when both the inputs are high you can take these two statements and you can compare it with the NAND you can compare it with the NAND output is high when any of the two inputs is low output is low when both the inputs are high means this is we call the NAND gate is this clear is this clear is this clear tell me in the chats yes great 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 this is NAND gate or you can compare this truth table with the truth table of NAND gate now let's move on to the next question this was the question which was also asked in 2019 let me basically make the figure over here this is k1 this is k2 this is plus 6 volts this is r and this is bulb this is also r in this case you guys are supposed to tell me this is which gate see when it comes to this one again we'll make the truth table let's make the truth table so we say this is k1 this is k2 and this is bulb this is bulb listen to me very carefully if I say let's suppose K1 is on and K2 is off. K1 is on and K2 in this case is off. Make the truth table and let me know the answer in this case. So we say if K1 is on and K2 is off, this is on and this is off. We say in this case, sir, if this K1 is on, K2 is off. So current will prefer. So we say current will prefer this path and will reach over here 
so in that case current always prefers that path in which there is no resistance current will not prefer the path through the bulb so we say in this case bulb remains off bulb remains off no current flows through bulb if i say this is off this is on means this is off now now current will choose this path this path so again it will not reach the bulb so bulb remains off now if i say sir this is on this is on this one is on this one is on so current can flow through this one current will flow through this one again bulb remains off now my dear friends if i say this is off and this is off this is off and this is off so we say if this is off this is off current cannot flow through this current cannot flow through this current has to flow through the bulb so in this case we can say bulb remains on now clearly you can see sir in this case output is low when any of the two inputs is high and output is high when both the inputs are high you can match this with you can match this with nor gate output is low when any of the two inputs is low output is high when any of the two inputs is high or you can compare this truth table with 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 this truth table so this is nothing but nor great 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 this is the trick this is the technique by which you can solve these questions let me solve this one this was the question asked in need 2018 so we have over here we are supposed to say what is the output in this case see 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 we say this is the a it will go over here directly this is b this is the b input and you have got the not gate over here so this will be b bar this will be b bar in this case okay this is a and this will be b bar in this case why because the work of not is to apply the bar now in this particular case listen to me very carefully sir this is and gate what is the work of and gate the work of and is to multiply so it will be a into b bar now over here this a bar it will be a bar over here because a is going in this not gate it will be a bar and this b is directly going over here this is again and gate so it will multiply a bar into b now this one is or gate sir the work of or gate is to add so it will add this input with this input so output in this case will be a b bar plus a bar b so which one is this a b bar and a bar b option b option b option b i hope you got it my dear friends i hope you got it tell me in the chats everybody this one we have over here this was the question which was asked in need 2016 so we have what is the output y in the following circuit what is the output y in the following circuit when all the three inputs a b c are first zero when all the three inputs a b c are first zero and then y then one see 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 what i'm trying to say is that we have got this over here this is and gate this is nand gate now in this case let's first find the output over here let me just tell you first find the output so we say in this particular case sir a is going over here b is going over here what is the work of and the work of and is to multiply so it is a into b and this c is directly will come over here now my dear friends if a and b is going over here c is going over here what is the output in this case you say sir output will be y is equal to sir what is the work of nand gate the work of nand is to multiply and then put the bar the output of nand is y is equal to ab bar so in this case ab is entering c is entering so output will be ab into c and then put the bar so i can simply say over here we say here output is y is equal to a b c bar whole bar now the question says that what is the output y in the following circuit 
when all the three inputs a b and c are zero it says that if a comma b comma c are zero if we put all the three zero what is the output you say sir y is equal to zero into zero into zero that is zero and zero bar it will be one and then it says then when we put the three inputs as one then if a comma b comma c is equal to one we say output will be bar one 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 into one into one is one one bar is we say zero so the answer in this case is simply we say one comma zero because when you put first a comma b comma c as zero then output will be one and then if you put a comma b comma c as one then output will be zero so in that case output is one comma zero is this clear? Okay. This was the question which was asked in NEET 2016 and MAINS 2012. For the following circuit to get, get output as one, the correct choice of input is. In this particular question, you have to get the value of output as one. What should be the value of inputs? What should be the value of inputs? What should be the value of inputs? Tell me in the chats. Everybody. Tell me in the chats, guys. Is this clear to each and everyone? Okay, let me solve this particular question for you. So for the correct choice of, for see, we have to get the output here, here, we have to get the output as 1. We have to get the output as 1. Okay. So we have to, so we have to choose the correct choice of inputs. Listen to me very carefully. Let's suppose, let's take the first one. If we take this as 1, a is equal to 1 if we take b as 0 and c is equal to 0. Listen to me very carefully. Let's see what will be the value of y. Sir, this is what we call the OR gate and this is what we call the AND gate. The work of OR gate is to add. So we say 1 plus 0 is, we say 1. And this is 0. The work of AND gate is to multiply. So this gate will multiply the two inputs. So that is 1 into 0 that will be 0. So output in this case is coming out to be 0. But we have to get the output as 1. So this is the wrong. This is the wrong choice. This is the wrong choice. So what we will do in this case instead is let's take the choice B. If we take this as 1, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1, C is equal to 0. In this case, or, or will add 1 plus 1, it will come out to be 1. Then this 0, this 0 over here, okay. So we say, we say, sir, this and will multiply. 1 into 0 again, it will come out to be 0. So this is also wrong. Because answer final output has to be 1 only. Now, let's suppose, let's go for the option number D. So, if this is 0, this is 1, and this is 0. Now, 1 plus 0 is 0. Sorry, 1 plus 0 is 1. 
Now, this AND will multiply the two inputs. That is 1 and 0. 1 into 0 is again 0. So, this is also the wrong choice. Because we have to get the output as 1. Now, let's take the option 3. Let's put A is equal to 1. B is equal to 0. C is equal to 1. A is equal to 1. B is equal to 0. C is equal to 1. So, we say in this case, 1 plus 0 is 1. Because OR will add the two inputs, 1 and 0. And then you have this one over here, okay? Now, what is the work of AND gate is multiply. So, it will multiply the two inputs. 1 into 1 is 1. So, output in this case is 1. So, option C is the correct option. Option C is the correct option. Guys, can anyone inform sir will solve how many questions normally? More than 70, 80 questions. Answer to your question, huh? Done and dusted. Thank you so much. Done with semiconductors. Okay. I hope everything is sorted. Everything is crystalline clear. And make sure you hit that like button. Okay. And after this, I want everybody of you to basically comment down below once I end the live stream. Okay. Once I end the live stream. I want you guys to comment down below, okay? How was the session each and every single thing, okay? Do let me know. That is very much mandatory. And like this session if you have not liked it yet. Like this session if you have not liked it yet. Okay? So I'll be ending the live stream and I'll put up the notes also. I'll put up the notes also. So let me export. okay so i am ending the live stream thank you so much guys i want you guys to put up the comments down below do let me know okay with the josh hi so take care and bye bye see you guys in the next session till then take care